and they will also introduce uh, the team. Provincial Cocter, or oh, oh, Provincial Treasury, oh, I've done that. Salka, they will introduce themselves when they are in. Uh, AG as well, the team will introduce itself when they are here. Seti Bank District Municipality of Councilor Lerato Maloka, who is the executive mayor, and uh, MM, Mr. Mate, who is the municipal manager. Mfuleni, uh, we've got Councilor Sirkoha Debe, who is the executive mayor. All of them will introduce their delegation as they uh, uh, speak. Uh, any further apologies, uh, Portfolio Committee Secretary? Good morning, Chairperson. Good morning, everybody. Yes, we, we have the apology from Honorable Direko that's still on study leave, Honorable Kroonewald that has um, another engagement, as well as Honorable Spies that has some family engagement. We also have apologies from the department. They are appearing before the Standing Committee on Appropriations this morning. And then Mr. I, oh, I just got note that Tim Tao is in the meeting as well as Mr. Clive Maduna from the Gauteng from Gauteng that is sorry, sorry for that chair person. Um, sorry that the messages is coming through. Mr. Paul Mukhali is also in the meeting and Mr. Clive Maduna that's representing Gauteng from the Department of Cooperative Governance. Thank you, chair person. Uh, what what you have not done properly is to uh, inform me that uh, the deputy minister for cooperative governance, uh, Honorable Tao, is part of the meeting. Uh, let me welcome you, deputy minister. Sorry for the glitch. I think it's it's a communication breakdown between our uh, administrator and uh, ourselves. We welcome you and uh, we hope uh, this is going to, to help us, uh, especially in the absence of the uh, uh, two executives from uh, 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 Gauteng Provincial Government. But I think uh, uh, for purposes of us being proper, uh, we will continue to introduce uh, members as we proceed. Uh, where I've left some, where there are gaps, it means I've not been given those names, but we'll continue. Salga and the AG's office and any other uh, person who might not be introduced properly. Um, <clears throat> I think our focus is on engagement on the state of uh, M. Fuleni local municipality. And uh, it's a program that we have been continuing with uh, a deputy minister. We are engaging uh, municipalities uh, that have been said to be uh, dysfunctional but continually they get reassessed and we get updated. But specifically with them fully in, the portfolio committee has engaged with them. Uh, I think twice, this is the third time. Unfortunately, I'm coming in like you for the first time with the engagement of M. Fulin. So this is some kind of a follow-up meeting and uh, I think both the district and national officials are aware of those uh, instances. But normally we allow the provincial government in the form of COCTA 
as well as provincial treasury to introduce, uh, make presentations to the committee, and then they will follow uh, in this order. This is almost a known order now. It would be COGTA, provincial treasury. Uh, after that, it would be the AG's office. After that, it would be SALCA. After SALCA, it would be DCOG. After DCOG, it would be Setiweng. Uh, district municipality, and the last one would be M. Fule. So I would suggest let's follow that order because we are used to it. Uh, Honorable Room Kalipi, I see your hand. Yes, thanks, Chair. Sorry for interrupting you. I just want to establish if we form quorum uh, here. Okay. Yes. Second, I just want to check with you, Chair, since you said you are sharing from the airport. Uh, for how long and what will happen when you need to go? Thanks, Chen. The assumption, <laughs> the assumption is that we will uh, finish at least before one o'clock. I'm not uh, leaving now, but I wanted to make sure that uh, I I don't have to be disorganized. So I hope we'll finish uh, at least by half past twelve. Uh, but if it doesn't happen, uh, obviously, uh, we will have arranged by that time who takes over. Uh, Portfolio Committee Secretary, do we form Cora? Chairperson, yeah. yes, we do form a Cora. Chairperson, I'm not sure if it, it is um, Deputy Minister Tau that's in the meeting. I think the, the, that is actually... Um, the councillor from Salga and, and not the deputy minister. No, I got a message here from the charts group, but we'll, we'll clarify that as we proceed. Uh, can we then, uh, honorable members, uh, proceed and uh, allow a uh, provincial cocktail? to present over to you, Provincial Court. Provincial Court. DTG Masa. Uh, thank you, Chairperson. I was uh, and good morning to members, uh, to you, Chair and members. Um, I was under the impression that the HOD was in the meeting to introduce, but uh, thank you so much, uh, Chair. I'll allow Mr. Nguepe, uh, who is in the meeting and the person who leads our work in that region, to to present. Thank you so much, uh, Chairperson. Thank you. Mr. Ngwebe, would you want to start? Can we also, I don't know, Secretary DZ? Yeah, my, my apologies, I'm connected on my laptop. Um, I'm on my phone. And um, I'm not able to, to present. The, 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 if if the I can request that the presentation be shared. Is there someone to assist from Secretariat, please? Okay, we can see the presentation. Chair, my apologies. It's just that uh, my laptop uh, always has difficulties in connecting. Uh, I'm not, it's a network problem. 
If you can please go to the next slide. The the presentation uh, uh, outline is as it stands. Yeah, I'm not going to read through that. Um, we start by looking at the overview of CDBN. If you can please go to the uh, slide that follows. Um, please skip this one. This just gives the um, uh, CDBank district in terms of uh, the number of um, uh, the total population that is there uh, and in between the years 2011 and 2016. Um, and you can see it's estimated that about 48.5 of the population lives in poverty. We would know that the industrial, um, the, I mean, the steel industry was actually the driving factor behind uh, that that entire um, uh, district and, and some of the agricultural um, uh, initiatives. You can go to the next slide. Um, this slide just talks to some of the, um, uh, I mean, it's a continuation of the profile, but we're looking at uh, how, um, uh, what, what sectors are actually driving the, uh, the, um, uh, the district, the, the closing and textile industry, the mining sector has also declined. Uh, and you can see that the uh, industrial, industrialization in that area has sort of the, um, uh, deteriorated and, and it has left a lot of um, unemployed people in the area. Um, uh, and, but we know that the Ferenekang and Fanabel Park and working are key urban development nodes uh, for the province, and there's a lot that, that's happening there. Um, Savannah City is a new emerging node, uh, node along the uh, a broader N1 corridor, and uh, we, we actually are worried that the environmental challenges such as water pollution and air quality are actually impacting that. And, and the economy of the uh, district is unfortunately um, uh, hampered to a large extent. Next slide. These are some of the, this is actually the SWOT analysis that just shows the strength of, um, uh, of, of the district as a whole. You would see an, um, a demographic profile the population growth of, uh, of, of the district has been almost half uh, lower than that of, of Houting. Um, uh, but we're seeing some of the um, uh, opportunities that City Bank's population is pre predominantly young people. And in that regard, there's potential to prepare for a better future if all, this, all, all um, initiatives are then brought in. Uh, Properly and 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 then the youth receive the, the the proper support under the economic profile. You would realize that there are weaknesses around growth. Um, uh, most of the economic sectors show a decline or a, a relatively small growth on the infrastructure. Um, a weakness that that actually creates a untenable situation unless if we fix it quickly in terms of the bulk. Uh, of the water and sanitation network that is very old. I know the section 63 that's actually dealing with that at the moment. Um, and unfortunately, it, it's just moving slow, but there are interventions already in place. Uh, if I can move to the next slide. So the rest of the other areas would be under around transportation. Um, and then there's uh, on social facilities, would see that uh, um, uh, Part of the, the, I mean, the strength is education and health facilities are well distributed throughout the district. And I think this will assist in developing uh, the youth in terms of preparing them for better jobs in the future. Special growth and dy dynamics. Um, there is still a weakness in terms of spatial fragmentation that contributes to social uh, divisions and, and lack of efficient public transport. Um, uh, and there are initiatives, of course, in, in that regard to begin to, 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 to resolve that environmental and sustainability, availability of, um, say, water at the um, uh, required uh, quality for human consumption, sub consumption and also industry development is, is, is a challenge there. Um, uh, and hence, there is a Section 63 
and some of the municipal interventions that are in place to actually begin to deal with that. Next slide, please. Uh, this slide just talks to some of the root causes, and I will not take you through these uh, blow by blow. Uh, that's some of the issues that create the situation in the municipal is, is the high distribution losses. Um, even after section 139, uh, 1B and 5 uh, that has started some years back, the financial stability is still a bit of a challenge. Then we are still having the sewer spillages. Um, and this is mainly because the municipality requires to be um, geared up to, to, uh, to be capable of dealing with these at um, uh, the, the required timeframes and, and that they have the skills and they have the systems. And of course, dealing with the age infrastructure is also an issue uh, that, that needs to be dealt with. Then overall bulk infrastructure uh, is, is, is a problem. And this would even include um, some of the uh, waste, solid waste management sites. Um, and, and also bulk infrastructure that relates to um, uh, water and sanitation does affect extensively human settlement developments and other economic initiatives in the area. And as we would know, there are electric, I mean, the outages that, that are also related to the load shedding. But despite the load shedding, the, the, the network itself is actually uh, quite old. Next slide. Uh, please pass this one. Um, Chair, on this one, we're just indicating uh, when when Section 139B and 1395 actually was invoked in the municipality. And, and that there has been a lot of support that came uh, along with this uh, intervention. Um, and I think so, some of it ultimately at the end with the achievements sort of being undermined by the fact that the, the municipality, uh, given its financial state, is not able to sustain some of those. And, and uh, hence there is a, a feeling that um, uh, the, the, the intervention did not necessarily work. Um, and you see that it, it actually started back in, in 2018 and, uh, and and it went through up to 2022 in, in, in August when 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 uh, province decided to then uh, terminate the, um, uh, uh, the, the uh, section 13915 which was a discretionary uh, 139 139.1b which was a discriminatory intervention by the province but section 1395 remained in force. Uh, next slide, please. Um, just as a, as a way of indicating what it actually focused on, the, the, the intervention, it looked at supply chain management, it looked at finance, and it looked at infrastructure services. Uh, and of course, we have a, a, and I know in the previous discussions, there is a comprehensive report that shows the areas of success in terms of these and, and what the current section 1395 is doing and what uh, the section 63 uh, is, is actually doing. Next slide. Um, yeah, this slide, uh, I think I've spoken to the issues here, if we can proceed. Uh, of course, after terminating section 1391, uh, B copter still has section 139, uh, one, section 154, as it's normal support going on for, for the municipality. Um, some of the uh, uh, work that 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 that, that the COPTA does in the municipality under service delivery uh, talk about rural road asset management systems. Um, and, and we've provided that support to the municipality um, uh, integrated environmental and waste management plan uh, is actually planned to be concluded by uh, the end of 2023. Um, uh, we had to sort of reduce some of our support to, to the municipal due to, to our internal financial constraints uh, because we've got a company called SITE that's actually assisting us to do some of the some of the work in, in all the municipalities. Then. And hopefully it's just one of them, but we're providing the support throughout. Next slide, please. This talks to work on the spatial planning, the land use audit for CDB was developed and um, by the end of 2023, uh, provincial, uh, I mean, financial year yeah, would con conclude that. Um, uh, the, the bulk of the uh, groundwork has been done. 
And then there's work around the catalytic projects in the, in the one plan, and the, uh, these are the plans, the Val Marina uh, projects, the Ferenich and Taxi Rank. And these are all uh, uh, projects that are implemented by uh, the um, uh, sector departments and, and COCTA in terms of its role there uh, uh, facilitates that all of these departments then uh, implement the projects as planned. A strategic economic zone, um, uh, looking at some of the the protection around the steel industry um, and, 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 and TED, uh, uh, how the Department of Economic Development is doing work there uh, to, to, to support the municipality around that. Next slide. Um, then proceeding with service delivery, there's work around the reduction of water losses. The intention is to reduce that by 2% by the end of 2023. Would see that it has gone up uh, from 41 to 65, and uh, attributed to the fact that there is uh, all the old infrastructure that is there um, that 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 uh, creates the situation and the inability of the municipality to meet its turnaround time in terms of um, uh, repairing pipe bursts and um, uh, uh, other maintenance issues that. That they, that, that they need to deal with. On the electricity side, uh, also would see that the losses have increased from 22% to 23%, even if it's a small uh, move, but would have liked to have a move that goes downwards. Um, there are initiatives, of course, in terms of online metering and prepaid for residentials. Um, we're looking at uh, creating tariff, uh, assisting the municipality with this revenue um, enhancement strategy we've looked at some of the tariffs in terms of how they should then be um, uh, uh, managed and applied um, and, of, and of course we've also assisted them with the cost of supply study that has sort of indicated what um, uh, what what needs to be done in terms of tariffs and what needs to be done in terms of the distribution losses as they have a huge impact on the cost of supply study next slide please On good governance, uh, it, would, it would realize that there are a couple of issues that um, are, are, of course, supposed to be um, uh, um, resolved. Those relate to about 28 legal cases and uh, disciplinary matters uh, that, that are supposed to be dealt with in, in 2023. You'll see a couple of legal cases that have been reviewed. Those that have been concluded are indicated there being 10 and then 11 waiting new dates for patches and 15 charge seats have actually been um, uh, dealt with there. There also are issues around the um, uh, review of contracts. We see some of the contracts that have been reviewed at the bottom there uh, around security and MBG, the debt collection uh, 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 contract and, and reducing irregular and authorized expenditure by 50%. And uh, also see that 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 has not improved uh, instead of us um, uh, dropping the uh, the figures are going up uh, and on administration the feeling of fake in positions is currently sitting at six was sitting at 65 percent at the end of november 2022 and unfortunately it's a difficulty for the municipality to retain some of its senior managers um, uh, given the uh, the difficult situation that they are in uh, next slide please Some of the support that um, uh, has, has been provided, and some of it I've sort of talked to it, uh, in the previous slide, revenue experts supported in terms of the revenue uh, and cash flow. Um, and we continuously do the oversight support to fill critical uh, vacancies. Of course, we don't have any influence there. It's only um, uh, Providing guidance in some in terms of what 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 needs to be done what needs to be done in concurrence from the uh, MEC's office on the specific issues that relates to the office of the MEC. We've worked on the electricity online metering system, which is a project that uh, Cocta actually supports directly, and we provide support through the multidisciplinary team of of of, of experts uh, that offers uh, support around issues on, on engineering and town planning. Um, next slide, please. 
Um, and then we've worked with the municipality on a generic policy for developer contributions. We are yet to customize it for, for the municipality so that we make sure that the developers in, in the area um, are actually pay, are contributing accordingly instead of uh, having them uh, uh, make the municipality contribute for infrastructure services um, that in actual fact are supposed to be funded to, uh, by them. We've worked on the distribution network uh, and we've captured where the pipelines are, the sizes, and, and where all of the um, uh, uh, difficult situations are so that we can uh, support the municipality in terms of dealing with water uh, conservation demand management to bring down the distribution losses. Um, we, we have also looked at um, operation and maintenance manuals uh, for Mfuleni. Uh, also, um, uh, we're working with the municipality uh, to develop technical business plans. We haven't done one with Mfuleni for the water conservation demand management because there is section 63 in place um, uh, that, that, that is actually assisting them with that. Then there's um, work that we did with them uh, beyond the cost of supply study, which was sub submitted to NESA because they need to have a comprehensive one. We've developed uh, the terms of reference, which they would have to use to go out on tender to procure that. And unfortunately, it must indicate the municipality does not necessarily have the funding to do that. Uh, next slide, please. We've, we've also looked at um, uh, uh, determining the bulk requirements for each of the services, which is water, sanitation, electricity. We're also doing it for water in particular on, on the human settlement development uh, needs. This slide just talks about in detail now in terms of the work that we're doing on the online automated uh, meter reading system. Um, uh, uh, just showing some of the progress there. And, and what we need to do and uh, to actually enable that project uh, is that we need to be fixing voltage transformers, which must be done by the municipality. We're also working on green hydrogen, hydrogen development, um, uh, which is part of what DED does in there. But I must indicate that um, uh, the bulk of these initiatives require funding that the municipality doesn't have. And then COCTA uh, also does facilitate for funding from um, uh, funding institutions where possible, um, but also accessing that funding is a bit difficult. Next slide, please. Um, some of the areas uh, in terms of achievement, this talks mainly to the deployment of uh, revenue experts, uh, and we're detailing what sort of work that was, was being done, uh, and it included data cleansing, tariff modeling, meter reading support, um, and improving billing and targeting non-billing uh, on, on, on key services. Uh, that's overall, not just water and, and uh, water. It, it looked at the whole services that the municipality is, 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 is rendering and that requires to be um, uh, paid for. Next slide. Um, the, the, the other way that we do is in terms of supporting the uh, uh, financial situation of the municipality. There's a debt management committee that has been established. Um, and this has actually managed to uh, facilitate uh, outstanding debt by government departments in April. Uh, that started from April to date. There's, uh, that amount that has already been collected, 133 million, 599, and that has gone to the municipality. But I must indicate that this is not, that's not sufficient and, and the, 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 pro, the support is actually still proceeding because there is still more debt um, uh, that, that is due to, to the municipality. Um, and then there's a whole drive in terms of the implementation of the debt reduction strategy uh, through this, this debt management committee. Next slide, please. Uh, well, this is just a slide that details what the key activities for the um, uh, uh, intervention on uh, unauthorized, irregular, and fruitless expedition. We have seen previously that that has not increased, but we're just detailing what uh, kind of activities are being undertaken to achieve that. Next slide. 
Uh, and here, the, this, the few slides will then talk for the establishment of the DDM uh, hub, uh, which is, is actually a, a, a vehicle that we're using for joint planning. Um, and, and we're indicating we have which just recently appointed a, a, a company that is actually assisting us to do that. So it pulls everything that happens in the municipality and assist us in terms of uh, making sure that there's integrated planning and implementation. There are also capacity building uh, initiatives that we put in together in that. And, it, it, and, and the hub actually enables us to share resources and, and this uh, at least by doing so, we have impact in terms of monitoring because the whole district then comes together in that hub and, and it plays quite a, a critical role uh, in, 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 the, in, 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 in the work that, that um, uh, uh, the, the district municipality, I mean, the entire district municipality is supposed to achieve through the, through the municipalities. Next slide. In, in the district in the district hub um, itself um, the the core functions are listed there chair I wouldn't want to uh, take you uh, through that this is mainly aligned even to the chapters of the one plan um, uh, you'd see the, there's then the the project team that 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 uh, we, we we're looking at um, and also in terms of procuring the the project team, it, it is also aligned to the chapters of the of the of the of the DDM one plan, and um, and this is what what is in place to make sure that the DDM hub is then uh, or the DDM uh, model is actually uh, effective. Next slide. Um, yeah, this slide just proceeds to explain uh, how we implementing the uh, CDBN DDM hub. If you can uh, go past it. Um, the few slides that are coming up are actually just talking to the uh, incident that we had with regards to the flooding in the area. Um, we, we're just indicating that on the 9th of February, um, uh, there were, we had experienced severe weather conditions and um, the, the, um, uh, the, 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 the department through its uh, disaster management unit started uh, working uh, with councillors and, and, and CDWs in the area, and they have um, uh, been able to uh, quantify the extent of the damage uh, on, on private properties, on roads and bridges, and in, on, the, on what happened in the informal settlement. Um, uh, of course, the situation was exacerbated at some point around the 17th, 18th of February. Um, when when the um, sluice gates at the Val Dam were actually open, but the department DWS did uh, manage um, the issues around that. Humanitarian support was then uh, provided um, uh, and again coordinated uh, by the department uh, disaster unit, including the district um, uh, uh, disaster unit, um, and and some measures were put in place to to combat that. Um, uh, there's been a, quite a number of entities that have actually supported the whole process. Um, if if you, but it must also indicate that the the most affected township in in um, in in in, in City Bank was uh, uh, working uh, Everton and some areas of 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 Palm Springs. Um, uh, if you can move to the next slide. This slide just indicates um, in terms of the, uh, the, the, the areas that were affected and, and how they were affected. There were two cases of drowning um, and there were a total number of 374 people uh, from 102 households and about 51 people were actually displaced because of the flooding. And you would indicate here at the bottom the uh, affected sections of uh, M. Fulini. Um, uh, they are listed there and, and, and the wards and the affected uh, communities. I think that's just detailing the number uh, at, 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 at the top in the top slide. This is just a map indicating the areas which were affected um, uh, heavily in using the colors. 
Um, if we can go to the next uh, slide. Uh, of course, we're indicating that there was humanitarian support that was provided, and then there was also emergency shelter uh, that, that, that was provided in the area. Um, uh, and some of the NGOs that were involved were Red Cross, uh, the Islamic Relief and Social Development, uh, and the support provided focused on, on basic needs. Um, um, uh, and then there are also um, infrastructure damages that um, uh, have been recorded in the area um, uh, and, and relief has actually been provided uh, on, on, on in those areas. Next slide, please. Um, yeah, we, this slide just talks to what, what government did in terms of uh, responding. It activated the municipal jock on the 16th um, uh, and, 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 this, and that whole uh, centralized food response effort. Uh, and it was ultimately moved to the district because that's, that's um, uh, the function of the, of the district. Um, without actually here repeating some of the issues that we've spoken at previously. Um, uh, yeah, um, various government departments and stakeholders have actually given a lot of um, uh, support there. Uh, some of the challenges um, uh, that relate to the work that we're doing in Mfulin is that there's, uh, I mean, in, in, in specifically on, on, on disaster issues is that there is no fully fledged disaster management center. There are limited resources and disaster management capacity at local and district. Uh, and then um, stakeholder involvement and participation is, is actually, actually lacking there. But I, uh, there are of course current interventions in terms of uh, disaster officials that are operating from different municipalities and they also the dependency on services at the provincial disaster management services. Um, despite whatever vacancies are there, the, the department is still doing its best to um, um, provide uh, interventions. Next slide. So Chair, that was the last uh, slide, thank you. Very much. Um... What I failed to indicate at the beginning was that uh, the provincial treasury will only join the meeting at 10. And uh, because of that, then we have engaged uh, the Office of the Auditor General to come in, uh, Ms. Dorothy Rambopo, who is Deputy Business Unit Leader uh, must come in and I also did not indicate that uh, the indicated time limit is 15 minutes for each presenter. Over to you, uh, uh, Office of the AG. Um, good morning, uh, members of the committee. Uh, just for introduction purposes, uh, my name is uh, Sirofi Dorothy uh, Rampopo. I am accompanied by Samuel Matabela, uh, who was the manager on the audit. I also have Ani Rosen Vengensami, who was the senior manager, um, who will be here for a short period because he has to attend another engagement. Uh, earlier on, I did say the business unit leader, Dumsani Kabekulu, um, he was also in the meeting. Unfortunately, he had to exit earlier. Um, and I also have um, Marco Boy Griffiths from uh, our uh, business unit uh, supporting us in terms of um, stakeholder engagement uh, at head office. Um, I will switch off my video um, and um, start with the presentation. Good morning, um, Honorable Chairperson, um, and also um, the members of the committee and as well as um, the representatives from the Department of Cocta, as well as from um, 
all other um, stakeholders have, have been included in the meeting. I'll start with the presentation. I do acknowledge um, the chairperson's um, request that we need to speak to the time that has been allocated. I will try my level best to, to, to do that. Um, let me, if you can go to the next slide. I just want to spend some time on the reputation promise slide. As we all know that the Auditor General, uh, we have a mandate, a constitutional mandate, and we exist primarily to strengthen our country's democracy and, and enabling oversight. And other ways and means that we are enabling oversight is through the engagements that we are having today, where we are empowering the committees and also the oversight uh, committees to be able to exercise their responsibilities. We are going to be sharing insights that will empower yourself and um, to, to, to take your mandate forward in engaging the municipality as well as understanding the status of uh, the municipality going forward. Um, our vision is to be recognized by all stakers, stakeholders as a relevant Supreme Audit Institution that enhances public sector accountability. If you move to the next slide, just to give you an outline of the outcomes for, for um, MF learning. We, we have um, the, the municipality has regressed in, in the current year to qualified uh, audit opinion. The municipality was qualified in 2020, in 1920. They slightly improved in 2021 and they have regressed again in 2022. And basically the um, areas that I can um, attribute to the regression, uh, the areas relating to uh, the risk areas relating to the quality of the financial statements, the quality of the submitted performance information, as well as uh, supply chain management. And we also raised some concerns around uh, the financial health of the municipality. Um, and there are, critical uh, drivers of internal controls that uh, contributed to this uh, negative outcome when you're looking at this uh, three uh, areas of reporting. And those are um, the responsibilities around uh, the leadership. What is the leadership doing in terms of um, those internal controls relating to um, the, 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 the culture of, 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 of of setting the tone at the top at the municipality and also the oversight responsibilities. We have noted that the audit action plans that we put in place, they are not necessarily um, followed up and they're also not implemented. There's concerns around IT governance as well at the municipality areas of uh, record keeping is, is, is a huge area of concern um, that we have raised at the municipality as well. And we, are, we have assessed the, the assurance uh, level pro, um, providers in terms of their impact on, on the municipality. And we are saying that the senior management, which is the first um, pillar of uh, assurance provider where they need to implement the internal controls that are there, uh, we are saying that they provide uh, limited assurance as well as the accounting officer, which is the municipal manager, and we, we, we relate the message to, to, to the municipality. And this is due to even those instabilities that are being noted and also the high vacancy rates at the municipalities, which is hampering the progress of us assessing um, the municipalities uh, assurance providers as, as effective. And we are saying that the audit committee and the internal audit committee, they need to play a role in ensuring that where the municipality is required to, to, to capacitate and empower council on a regular basis, on a quarterly basis, internal audit has to come in and make sure that those reports and, and, and information that is shared with uh, council is information that is credible and also information that is shared with the external auditors is information that is credible and, and to the right level of, of uh, quality that can be audited. And we found that the information that we have audited is not at the right um, standard. Um, if you move to the next um, slide, 
Um, just this slide just gives an overall or an overview of um, the, the progress that the municipality and the outcomes that the municipality. And we are saying that um, the municipality has um, regressed overall in, in terms of the audit outcomes of financial statements. And they have also remained stagnant with the quality of um, um, of uh, performance information in terms of the KPA that we have selected for audit. Compliance with laws and regulations also still remains a concern uh, in terms of the repeat non-compliance findings that we have identified at the municipality. The financial sustainability of the municipality remains uh, as intervention required. This is a huge area because it has an impact of the municipality's ability to pay the creditors within um, you know, the required time of 30 days. We understand that the municipality is also having challenges in terms of paying uh, the bulk uh, service providers at the municipality. Um, and this is uh, a, a great concern that we have highlighted uh, at the municipality. The, the KPI that we have um, identified, which is relating to the basic services, we've noted that the municipality only um, achieved 46% um, of the targets that they have been set. And this is a concern because it, even though the budget has been spent, but only 46% of the uh, KPIs have been um, achieved. If you go to um, the next slide, um, what we are saying, um, particularly around the area of irregular expenditure. Um, we are saying that we are seeing, we are still seeing a, an, an increase in, in the amount of irregular expenditure as well as fruitless and wasteful expenditure. As highlighted there, you can see fruitless and wasteful expenditure um, for the current year amounted to 827 million. And uh, this is where the municipality either paid penalties or they paid interest or the, the instances where they did not receive the, the services um, equaling to the amount that has been paid. The regular expenditure for the current year was uh, 232 million. Um, and also we are seeing that unauthorized expenditure also increased in the current year by 2 uh, billion in, in, in the current year. Um, the debtors' impairments continue to increase on a year-on-year -year basis due to, to poor collection rates. The municipality has, is not able to collect um, revenue or the amounts that they are billing to the customers. As a result, it has an impact on the municipal ability to also pay their creditors when those uh, debts become due. If you go to... Um, the, the the next slide. Um, we just wanted to highlight some of the issues that we have emphasized in the audit report. These matters don't have an impact on the overall audit outcome. However, we found and assessed them as matters that we wanted to elevate in, in our audit report. We have um, as, uh, elevated the area of material as uncertainty relating to the going concern of the municipality, as well as um, the uh, issues relating, I will not go through them uh, line by line, but also the issue around the distribution losses, as well as the uh, material impairments. Uh, the distribution losses that we've noted as well is a standard that we do in the reporting, uh, to elevate the amount of uh, the distribution losses that the municipality is, is uh, disclosing on year on year. These matters have been separately been disclosed in the financial statements of the municipality. Um, if you go to the next slide, um, and we are saying um, in terms of the uh, municipality's uh, ability to um, to, to improve, um, these areas need to be attended to. Um, the quality of the published financial statement, we noted that uh, the municipality was not able to, um, you know, recognize all the expenditure. It means that when we tested, we found uh, that there were some transactions that were not, uh, you know, recorded in the financial statements and which is of concern. 
And also in terms of expenditure management, uh, I've, I've already um, briefed you around the status of the, the, the non-compliance as well as the financial statements. The area of expenditure management um, and the area around uh, invoices not being paid within 30 days, is, it was a, a huge concern. Um, and also procurement and contract management. Uh, some of the goods and services of the of a transaction value around over two hundred thousand that we would be selecting for for auditing were procured without invite inviting competitive bids, um, and that is in contravention with as, as CM Regulation nineteen. Some of the contracts over 30 million uh, were not did not include a condition of mandatory subcontracting um, to um, as well as uh, the performance of the contractors. We found that there was lack of um, contract management or um, adequate contract management at the municipality as well. Um, if we go to the next slide. Um, the um, around, area around uh, audit of performance information, the, the KPIs that we have selected, um, it, it, the KPA is around the basic service and infrastructure, which is where the bulk of the, um, obviously the focus of the municipality and the mandate of the municipality. And we have issued a qualified audit opinion around that area. So meaning that we were not satisfied with uh, the level of um, information that was submitted. The municipality could not substantiate what has been reported. And in some instances, there were discrepancies that we have uh, noted uh, when we were assessing this KPA. And this is of a great concern because obviously it means that what the municipalities reporting as the performance and achieved performance, it cannot be um, verified through the audit process. The uh, focus area on information technology, um, overall, um, there were concerns that we have raised um, at, at the municipality. And in prior year, we raised the same issues. We came in, we, we raised the, um, around the areas of IT governance, as well as the IT controls. These matters were reported to the municipality, but we found that uh, the, the status of these outcomes still remain um, stagnant um, and the municipality did not implement the recommendations that were shared uh, from the audit outcome. The stagnation of the audit, IT audit outcomes was due to failure to implement the action plans as per the AGSAs and lack of um, consequence uh, therefore in terms of uh, those that were uh, mandated to implement those action plans. We have also noted around the area of IT governance, uh, we have noted that there's no um, governance structures that are in place, um, which is a great concern. Uh, the framework of um, the municipality in terms of IT governance has not been approved and it still remains in draft. Also, there was no governance uh, champion that has been appointed and an IT steering committee has not been established at the municipality. And the IT risk assessment was also not conducted to identify the risks affecting IT environment for the 2021-2022 financial year. Um, in terms of around the, the controls, we've also noted some concerning um, issues relating to the dis disaster recovery plans that were not in place and adequate, and also the fact that uh, the backups were not um, done properly at the municipality, and um, some issues around the security patches. And this is exposing the municipality around the risk of uh, cybersecurity. Should the municipality be attacked, this municipality will have challenges in terms of recovery of information as well as continuity um, going forward. Around the areas of the um, key project, we selected some key projects that are also relating to basic service. And some these are some of the insights 
that we we have identified um, at the, the 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 projects we selected the booking um, water treatment um, as well as legal uh, water treatment and race spread um, uh, water treatment as well. What we found is that uh, the infrastructure of the municipality is in a dilapidated state. And we also conducted site visits in three water um, wastewater treatment plants. Um, and we noted that the site were not effectively safeguarded and maintained to prevent malfunctioning, theft and vandalism. Hence the, the water uh, wastewater works were not operating as intended. So we are saying that uh, reasonable measures uh, were not taken to prevent significant pollution and also degrade degradation degradation of the adjacent environment as a result and effluent is not disinfected um, with chlorine before it is discharged and causing uh, pollution to the Val River. I will be making some um, reference to some of these areas or findings later on in, in the slides. Um, the, the summary of the findings, the following slide is just the summary of the slides. I've already um, shared some of the, 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 the major uh, findings that we have noted. But the one that I want to, to lift and, and highlight is, is the one that is relating to the contravention or the non-compliance with, uh, with the NEMA um, at all these, um, you know, wastewater uh, treatment plants that we have selected. And there is a, a cause for, for great concern. And also there is environmental risks um, that are relating to the lack of uh, maintenance of these water waste, uh, wastewater management uh, plants. And we noted that this is this could potentially cause harm to um, the public as well as the citizens around uh, the municipal area. In terms of the material, if you go to the next slide, material irregularities around the Public Audit Act um, amendments, and the municipality was subjected to um, the implementation process. And also in terms of um, the, um, the MIs or the material irregularities that we would be um, uh, uh, selecting and the municipality. We, we, we did have an engagement, extensive engagement with even the, the, the municipal managers that have been changing at the municipality, bringing them up to speed in terms of their role and responsibility, as well as the, the executive authority or the, the executive mayor. We have engaged the executive mayor in terms of what needs to be done. And we, we said that the, the, there is a great concern that the um, executive mayor needs to make sure that they support the municipal manager in addressing the MIs that we've already previously identified and making sure that those recommendations and actions plans are implemented as committed by, by the municipality. If you go to the next slide, uh, it gives um, a detail of the material irregularities that we have um, uh, identified and, and um, raised at the municipality. Um, the failure of um, to pay um, tax payable uh, by the required time frame by the municipality. Uh, the municipality failed to pay the tax uh, that was due to, to SARS. And we have raised that because it was attracting penalties to the municipality. And the non-compliance is likely to result in a material financial loss if not um, uh, recovered. So at the end of the day, what we are saying is that if there is any contravention in terms of any amounts that are due to SARS, they do attack attract penalty, which has to be disclosed as uh, fruitless and wasteful expenditure. And it is a financial loss to the municipality. The municipality is losing money that is uh, that they don't have, um, uh, essentially. And also the material, uh, this was a material um, irregularity that we raised in the current year. And previously, um, we raised two material irregularities um, 
where we issued the notifications last year in July after we finalized um, um, the 2021 audit uh, process. And we raised one around the ESCOM invoices that the ESCOM invoices are not settled within uh, 30 days. And those um, ESCOM invoices were attracting uh, interest, obviously, because they are bulk and huge amounts that are due to ESCOM, as well as rent water. Um, so similarly, those we have um, raised material irregularity. We are in the process of evaluating the responses from the accounting officer and tracking the implementation of those uh, actions that have been committed by the accounting officer. In some instances, the accounting officer had committed to enter into payment arrangements and agreements to make sure that the amounts are settled uh, eventually. So those are the, the, the matters that we will be continuously um, tracking with the municipality on a regular basis to assess the status of progress of the commitments that were, were, were shared with us. If you go to the next slide, um, management, we, we solicited uh, some of the uh, commitments from management um, and also it's a, it's a summary of the commitments that management has committed to implement these areas. And if they do uh, implement these areas, it, it will be a, a step in the right direction uh, because, and it also starts with issues around the vacancies. Um, earlier on, I reflected on, on the status of the assurance uh, providers and, and, and I stated that senior management is not providing adequate assurance. And for senior management to provide adequate assurance, there has to be warm bodies and there has to be individuals that are held accountable and they are in, you know, competent and skilled, experienced uh, individuals that are holding those positions so that they can be able to implement those controls and monitor the implementation of those controls. So one of the commitments, the first one, which is a major one, is the commitment from, uh, the, from the municipality to um, make sure that they fill the vacancies, especially on, on senior management level, uh, so that it can stabilize uh, um, the department. And we, we also note uh, shared the commitment with with them that if they strengthen the internal controls around the financial statements which is around the disciplines of uh, financial reporting and reviews the municipality should be able to move in the right direction um, compliance adherence to the to the regulations implementation of of making sure that when they procure all the adequate laws and regulations are adhered to and complied with um, there's an area of concern. Management should timelessly address root causes in audit findings identified by the AGSA. We share everything with the municipality on year on year when we go and do our audits in terms of what are the root causes and what are the things that they need to implement. And if there is discipline around adhering to those matters that have been re re reported, the municipality can move in the right direction. Um, and we also said um, the municipality should implement the recommendations and advise the audit committee in an attempt to strengthen the internal control environment and regular engagements with the audit committee from their side should be the one where they are giving the status of where they are in terms of implementing our recommendations. And they should also put uh, in place processes and measures to ensure usefulness and reliability of reported performance information. And we also said uh, risk management processes should be strengthened in the area of monitoring of implementation of risk management initiatives to mitigate, mitigate the risk of uh, to an acceptable level as well. Just a summary in the next slide is a summary of the commitments that we previously shared with a relevant um, uh, executive media at the time. Um, it was around the financial statements um, and we've noted that uh, the commitment was not adhered to and it was not implemented because we had repeat findings in the current year. In the area of performance management, um, we are saying that it's still in progress. There is some pockets of um, you know, improvements that we have noted, 
However, overall, we still identified findings um, in the current year, um, which resulted in the audit of opinion, audit opinion of the predetermined objectives being qualified in the current year as well. Um, the area around strengthening the compliance in the municipality um, was also not adhered to. We still had repeat material non-compliance findings that we have noted in the current year. And also um, vacant positions um, that it was committed, especially around the Section 56 managers, because those are the ones that will be uh, at a level where the municipal manager can be able to hold individuals that are you know, capable of driving the objectives of each department accountable in making sure that they implement the controls and also they monitor adherence to the controls that are there. Um, we've noted that key management positions were not filled um, during our assessment and also um, the progress around the material irregularity um, as it stands, the material irregularities have not been resolved. And the only time that we will get to the status where the material irregularities are resolved is when the municipality has implemented all the action plans or the action items as per the action plan for, for the municipality. And at the time that we did our assessment, we realized that these are still in, in progress. And that is the end of my presentation, um, Chairperson. Um, I will pause there to, to take questions. If there are any. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, the questions will come later. Uh, I, I assume that uh, provincial treasury has joined. And if that is the case, uh, Mr. Vetboy, who is DDG leading the team, uh, must take over because they joined late. We also indicated that uh, as you start, you can as well introduce your team and uh, you have 15 minutes for the presentation. Over to you, uh, Provincial Treasury. Is Provincial Treasury in? Um, if they are not ready, I think we'll uh, move down in the same order as was indicated earlier. After the AG, it would have been Salga. Salga, uh, yes. Good morning, uh, Chairperson. Uh, we are in a Salga. Uh, yes. How thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> let me let me greet you, Chair of the Portfolio Committee and uh, members of the Portfolio Committee. Uh, my name is uh, <laughs> Councillor Jongizizu Labati. I am the chairperson of Salga in Fauteng. Uh, I am joined uh, <clears throat> by office bearers uh, of Salga, as well as the our provincial director. Um, and the team from our office. Uh, I also wish to acknowledge the deputy minister and all other stakeholders uh, and officials that have joined the meeting. Chair uh, Silo is going to make a presentation uh, on behalf of Salga. Uh, just a few remarks uh, on my part uh, to say that um, in our assessment as the association, we have really identified a, a risk of a downwards tra trajectory uh, if you look at the local government sector. And this is largely because of the challenges that are facing the sector, including amongst others, Chairperson, you know, the weaknesses around prudent financial management and internal system of controls, the issue of insufficient funding, inadequate and ineffective systems of service delivery, some challenges in respect of uh, those that are fit for purpose, um, you know, in relation to human capacity. And of course, uh, instances of maladministration in some um, 
municipalities without the appropriate measures uh, being taken to cap or prevent the reoccurrence re uh, of such uh, instances of maladministration. The second point I want to, to make chair uh, is that um, as Salga were of the view that, uh, you know, with any intervention that is provided to any municipality that is facing challenges, it is important that as a first instant, uh, we strive to maximize or rather exploit an instrument of uh, section 145 as a starting point uh, before we venture into other instruments that are provided for. And our view is that uh, section 139 in relation to MFULEN, uh, it has not really assisted uh, or rather yield, yielded the desired results. In particular, if you look at the, the objective of uh, improving the minimum standards uh, for rendering services, uh, nor has the section 139 in MFULEN ensured some significant improvement uh, in the financial recovery of the municipality. The, the fourth point we want to, to also raise is that, you know, if you look at both the 2018 and 2021 intervention, as I said, that they have not really produced the desired results. The municipality continues, Chair, and the Portfolio Committee to experience uh, serious challenges, and there is a need to have collaborative efforts to extricate the municipality from this dire situation for its consequences really borders on our ability to provide services to communities. And for that matter, since both the intervention, we are raising a concern that uh, we have not uh, <coughs> came to a situation where there is a sort of a closing report uh, that points to the impact uh, of both these interventions. And I think this is fundamental if we are to assess uh, whether or not you know progress has been made uh, and what are the areas that still requires uh, intervention. In that regard, the uh, chair and the portfolio committee, SALGA has, has attempted to play its own role, uh, in particular providing support around the municipal audit uh, program, uh, our participation in the MPEG capacity building as part of sharing expertise, um, support around risk management as well as um, record management just to to mention few chair so that uh, there is a statement that is noted that saga has been playing its role uh, limited as it may be um, to the extent that chair we have adopted uh, as part of our adopting municipality program which we are piloting we have adopted m uh, wherein we are attempting to provide you know, a hands-on support into the municipality so as to ensure that it improves its own performance and that it enhances its own systems of good governance and service delivery. I must also mention, Chair, uh, as I allow Silo to come in, the fact that um, MFULEN is owing a huge amount to ESCOM, uh, ranging at about seven, uh, 7 billion. And this has really led to <coughs> to attachments uh, of the municipal uh, assets, uh, including the bank account, uh, wherein there was a risk that uh, employees were, were not going to be paid. And of late chair, uh, ESCOM is moving towards taking over the, the distribution of electricity from the municipality itself. Uh, you know, something which in our view as SALGA presents a very serious risk uh, into the financial viability and sustainability of the municipality. And I think it's something that must be registered with the serious concern because it may really render the, the municipality uh, incapable uh, of um, providing uh, or living up to its uh, constitutional mandate uh, as per chapter seven of the constitution. So I thought I must make those few remarks, Chair, uh, in laying the foundation and therefore through your permission uh, allow a silo to then take us through our presentation thank you thank you um thank you very much uh, chairperson and honorable members of the portfolio committee um colleagues from the sector departments and executive mayor of um local municipality 
Uh, Chairperson, I'm not going to go through the entire presentation as the Chairperson has touched on a number of issues uh, in terms of the background of our presentation, but we'll uh, focus on um, the support that we have provided to the municipality uh, of Mfuleni. Uh, I'm not sure if my slide is moving there. I think from my side, it's not. It's not moving, yeah. Anybody can assist, make sure that it moves. Okay, it's moving now. Yeah. Okay, I'm not gonna touch on the background. I think the chairperson has covered the background in terms of the intervention uh, in Mfuleni since 2018, uh, where we have been consulted at Salga. And also uh, when the intervention was extended, Chairperson, we had an extensive consultation and engagement with the then MEC for local government, where we agreed on certain areas of the implementation of the financial recovery plan, along with the terms of reference for the appointment of the, the then uh, the new administrator who was deployed at the uh, Mfuleni. I will just move uh, straight into the municipal audit support program that we provide to um, and Fulani municipality. Um, Salga has adopted um, a municipal audit support program, uh, which is a program that is uh, um, uh, premised on three pillars. Uh, one is financial uh, management, leadership, uh, governance, and uh, institutional capacity to provide capacity to those municipalities that have been um, identified to not being performing very well in terms of these areas. Um, what we normally do around financial management, uh, Chairperson, we provide assistance in terms of the, the preparations of the annual financial statements to municipalities, and also we train the municipalities around the GRAP um, uh, standards as to ensure that the financial statements that are being submitted to uh, AG are in line with the GRAP standards, and also um, assisted them with the toolkit uh, for um, assisting them to uh, comply with the requirements of the the GRAP uh, requirements for preparing financial statements. And also uh, the other area that we focused on chairperson is around the leadership of the municipality, which is one of the areas identified by AG that there's lack of leadership uh, in number of municipalities when it regards to play oversight and accountability in the municipalities. Um, subsequent to the local government election that were held in November, in 2021, Chairperson Salga conducted an extensive uh, generic um, ICIP, which is Integrated Councillor Development Program, where we train all councillors uh, who came in after the, uh, the, the dawn of the elections in 22. And then also one area that we have identified as a challenge as also uh, emanating from the finding of the AG is lack of consequence management and accountability. So Salga in partnership with uh, National Treasury and COCTA, we developed the framework of uh, consequence management framework, which will assist uh, municipalities in applying consequence management uh, in, to deal with those who have been found wanting in terms of non-compliance with the relevant legislation in the municipalities. And also uh, provided a, a leadership training for uh, guidance to councillors who are, are functioning in various uh, finance area um, uh, sections of the municipalities and sharing best practices with some other, some of the municipalities that have performed well, such as um, mid valley municipalities, to share their exp experience and expertise with uh, influential municipalities to assist them to improve their finances. And then uh, with regard to governance, Chairperson, um, majority of the MPEG members uh, in this municipality were new uh, after the elections. So in order to ensure that they are put on speed in terms of what they are supposed to be doing. We conducted the training, extensive training, to impact uh, uh, members, to provide them with relevant uh, skills and tools on how to do uh, perform their oversight and how to develop oversight report from the annual report and the uh, annual report and the that uh, and for annual financial statements, and also um, assisted in terms of. Um, working with the internal uh, audit and the risk management office. Um, and also in terms of uh, institutional capacity, we did, uh, as, as I indicated, Chairperson, we did training for um, all councillors 
and subsequently we also provided training to uh, portfolio based training for councillors who are deployed in various uh, departments in the municipality those who are dealing with environment uh, uh, water electricity there was a training that were provided to those councillors who have been deployed in those departments um as I indicated, Chairperson, uh, that the, the MPEC training was done uh, for the older municipality, all the MFUL municipality, and all councillors around the city district, and also the officials that were deployed to assist the MPEX, the researchers in the MPEX. We also work with them in collaboration with uh, provincial treasury and COCTA. And the second area, Chairperson, that we provided uh, support to MFUL is around risk management, as indicated by the Auditor General. that. There's a serious challenge around risk management. As SALGA, we provided hands-on support uh, to uh, MFULENI to review their risk management framework and also to develop an uh, annual risk management plan and also risk anti-corruption committee charter that which has developed. Uh, we provided this uh, extensive support around there. Though the other challenge that is still there uh, is that the uh, uh, MFULEN hasn't as yet appointed the chief uh, risk officer there as recommended by our uh, our, 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 our office that uh, there's a need for the appointment of risk officer in order to ensure that the plan is being implemented and to address the challenges and on a quarterly basis uh, review the risk register of the municipality. Um, The, uh, also, Chairperson, around um, uh, risk management, uh, revenue collection and debt management. Uh, as SALGA, we have um, assisted the municipality to develop a, a debt and revenue management whole room, which will deal, uh, assist the municipality in terms of debt collection. And as part of the SALGA national uh, program on Azizio pro uh, campaign, which we are rolling out to all municipalities to assist in order to create awareness and encourage communities in various municipalities to pay their municipal uh, 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 debts to municipalities on time, services that they receive from municipalities. We have done that uh, particular program around uh, Mfuleni municipality. And, and also uh, one area also chairperson that we provide support on is around record management. Uh, in partnerships with provincial archives, we assisted the municipality in terms of reviewing their, their uh, record management systems and provide the uh, officials there on how to uh, implement record management and so forth. So that is one of the areas that we provided support to, 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 uh, to the municipality. Another uh, support that we provided as indicated by our, our, our chairperson chair is the program called Adopt the Municipality where we identified three municipalities in the province which were not, uh, which were highlighted as uh, those are, are in red, uh, which are in Fuleni, Ren West, and Marafu municipality that we identified and we engage with them. We identified areas uh, of uh, collaboration where we are going to provide the multi um, sectoral hands on support to those municipalities in order to ensure that we address um, some of the challenges that are there in the municipality. So far, um, as of last week, Chairperson, we sat down with the, the management of Mfuleni municipality to assist them in terms of the, the review and the development of their strategy. We had a two-day session with them Friday and Saturday last week, where Salga management uh, assisted the municipality in terms of de developing a strategy on how to address the challenges that they're facing in a municipality. My apologies. My apologies for that. Um, one area, Chairperson, that uh, we also have um, we are assisting the municipalities with is the issue around the service level agreement proposed by ESCOM. As the chairperson has indicated that the, the manner in, in which the service level agreement has been crafted, chairperson is not, is going to uh, disadvantage the municipality. Uh, as SALGA, we are uh, trying to uh, provide the municipality with uh, uh, legal assistance uh, as to how to enter into this agreement with the municipality. Whereas Salga at the national level is taking a, a, a way of trying to see as to how they can, in an IGR um, spirit, uh, they can engage with um, uh, ESCOM as to see as to how they can um, agree with ESCOM 
on the proposed service level agreement uh, so that it doesn't compromise the municipality for sustainability moving forward. Uh, Chair personnel, and uh, that's the short of the, the presentation from South. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, uh, can we now move to check again if uh, uh, provincial treasury is around? Uh, provincial treasury, are you around? Uh, Chair, good, uh, good morning, and good morning to the honorable members. Uh, Chair, apologies for joining the meeting late. Uh, we currently have a, a I, as you know, we, we tabled the provincial budget yesterday, and we have a post-budget briefing this morning. And uh, I unfortunately joined the meeting late as a result of that. In fact, that is still continuing. Chair, I just want to record for the meeting that uh, our input should be, you know, seen jointly with the provincial uh, COCTA presentation uh, in terms of input for the meeting. Now that is uh, amenable to, to the committee. Uh, thank you, Chair. No, thank you very much. Uh, we appreciate that. Uh, we, we always see province as this collective. Uh, can we then, uh, without wasting more time, now move to... Uh, I think in terms of the line, it should be decock now. Greetings, Chairperson, uh, and honorable members of the committee, and all in the platform. My name is Live Maduna from the Local Government Operations and Support Branch. I'm joined in this uh, meeting by my colleagues, Lerato Matiba and Faisal Sheriff from um, the MESA agency. I'm also not going to be long, Chairperson, um, given that the previous presentations have given detailed context to a few issues we want to um, table uh, to the committee. We, we've also elected to focus our presentation squarely on the intervention, the progress thereof, and a few uh, proposals we want to make moving forward in terms of how we deal with some of the remaining um, issues. Uh, this slide seeks to, at least at a high level, deal with two things. Uh, the one is just to appreciate and, and, and uh, I think uh, provide, give credit to um, the province and the department in terms of the, uh, the work that they've done throughout the uh, period of the intervention. I think one would have seen a number of uh, progress of improvements uh, in terms of the work that has been done. But I think we have to admit that uh, challenges remain uh, in terms of service delivery. Some of these interventions that we would have uh, implemented over time would have not resulted as we think, uh, and it's our view that it have not resulted in meaningful uh, impact in terms of service delivery. And that's uh, a lot of work would need to be done uh, and moving forward. And I think all of this would bear testimony to the stagnant uh, nature of the dysfunctionality uh, that beset the, the, the municipality. On this slide, we were just uh, reflecting some of the observations that were made by this committee uh, in their visit in October of 2020 during the, the intervention. Then we were, slide, were present, uh, giving this slide for two purposes. The one is that we want the, the, the portfolio committee um, at least to benchmark some of the progress that it would have made against some of these issues that they would have identified uh, in Mfulani in their visit. But secondly, uh, perhaps an appeal to the committee to perhaps uh, as, as part of continuity uh, to monitor to what extent uh, some of these issues have been addressed by the municipality uh, and moving forward. Here we're just providing a just high level um, view um, of what we think would probably uh, need to be dealt with uh, moving forward. Um, and now of areas, as we have said, would have sh uh, shown improvements uh, during the period of, in, of the intervention. Uh, but we do think that a number of such uh, problems still uh, pers persist and therefore would require of us to, to have a, a collaborative approach moving forward of really dealing with some uh, uh, of these issues. But we think that the base and the foundation for, us, for all of us to be frank about some of these uh, the problems uh, that find expression in Mfulene from all um, um, angles. And such a proper diagnosis would need to be done so that we're able to really understand from what point of view we need to be uh, 
uh, dealing with some of this. And that for us is a root cause that, that we need to be focusing on. In terms of our own assessment, we would have um, observed political inadequacies and interference in some of these things, administrative incompetence, inefficiencies and cultures, including community and payment of services. And if you look at these three things, I think for us, it tells us that whatever plan that would need to craft moving forward in terms of intervening, or supporting and fooling, we need to look at these things. Uh, so all of these issues are part of the cocktail of problems that are there. So we can't have a plan, for instance, that does not take into account the community uh, issues, which are part of the challenge that we have, for instance, in terms of uh, uh, non-payment of services uh, moving forward. We, we also think that we would need to face these challenges head on if we were, if were to deal with that. Otherwise, any plan that does not take this into account would not necessarily sufficiently uh, address the problems. Uh, in Mfulen. And by way of example, we're looking at uh, perhaps across the few pillars, just uh, as an example of what we think would tell us that the municipality is still where it was, or at least has not moved much in terms of where it was in 2018. If you look at 2018, at the senior management level, you had no uh, senior manager except for the second at uh, MM at the time. And uh, as of uh, last year, uh, we only had about three senior manager posts. And so it does speak volumes in terms of stability and how we want to take the municipality forward. In fact, probably taking us backwards in terms of not having even any single senior manager who was part of the entire intervention who could then um, take the work forward in terms of uh, uh, dealing with some of these issues. Some of the things that we've identified or observed during the intervention was, uh, you know, a number of uh, uh, suspensions, especially of the CFO and the MM at the time during the intervention, uh, which for us would be a, a symptom of some of the issues that we need to deal with um, at the root cause and not just uh, uh, superficially. In terms of financial stability, I would not uh, waste time on this one. I think the AG, including the presentation by the former colleagues, would have gone into details in terms of where we are. Uh, as an example, the municipality has adopted an unfunded budget since 2018 to date, and there hasn't been any improvement um, to that effect. We've spoken about the ESCOM and the water port debts that keeps on um, uh, ballooning, um, and, and that for us is some of the problems that uh, uh, continue to, 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 uh, to manifest themselves even though the intervention uh, has been in place, including the fact that for at least second time uh, in December last year, the, the bank account of the municipality was attached, albeit by, by, by different entities. And therefore, for us, it means or it shows uh, that we still uh, are sitting with uh, similar challenges as we were uh, in, in 2018. I would not speak to issues of uh, litigation and disciplinary matters. I think that has been covered. On infrastructure uh, performance, we've also, as a Salga, I'm sure, and, and Peacock would have made this point, um, a deadlining slope in terms of capital expenditure. Um, instead of some improvements that we would have expected uh, uh, due to the intervention. As an example, again, in, in, in just uh, uh, now in January, National Treasury would have uh, stopped about 87.9 million uh, of the MIG allocation due to, to, to low expenditure. And so it, it does show that we were not uh, really winning this battle uh, as it continues. Um, the issues of moratorium and development, for instance, by TWS would uh, indicate that we're still far off in terms of dealing with the bulk infrastructure challenges. And unfortunately, in terms of the implementation of the one plan on catalytic project, that continues to, uh, to hinder that until we, we resolve the sanitation uh, infrastructure so that development is able to, uh, to continue. I will not speak to service delivery as much. We've seen progress of improvement, especially with regard to ref refuse re removal. As I said, credit to the province in terms of providing um, um, at the time, at the start of the intervention, uh, they refuse the waste management trucks to, to deal with some of these issues. But I think if you are looking at all the aspects of service delivery, uh, we have not, we have not, not made uh, much dent in terms of uh, moving forward uh, generally across. We would have provided a number of interventions ourselves in terms of support from the MISA perspective, but also from the department in terms of our own mandate advisory and all of that, including um, in terms of other mechanisms of 154 support through your DORAs and all of that. And we do think even ourselves would need to strengthen, as I would speak to that a bit later on, strengthen the coordination of support across all of government if we were to really resolve some of the challenges in influence so that all of us as government are really seen to be prioritizing areas where we think would really make meaningful impact uh, uh, moving forward. 
We just in terms of uh, concluding, I think we, the, the 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 information we have at disposal now, and I think to some extent the presentation that have been done would really uh, demonstrate that uh, there is work that has been done, and of course. We must appreciate the, the improvements that have been done, but to a larger extent, we we'll still need to, um, to deal with a number of some of these problems uh, moving forward. And I think what we have seen in terms of the information we have, it really assesses the continuity nature of this functionality in municipality, especially in terms of the provision of service uh, uh, delivery. And as I said in the last point, the, it's just for us moving forward to perhaps coordinated by co national level to strengthen the three spheres uh, support and provision to to, to M full in. And I think that must be inclusive of other critical stakeholders, including uh, the community itself and the civil society uh, formation. Our recommendation, uh, Chairperson, is that you note um, um, the fact that we the intervention has come to an end and we're still sitting with some of these challenges. As a department, we are in the process of uh, conducting the inspection in local just to determine to what extent challenges remain uh, upon which we can then table that report to uh, to cabinet uh, for it to decide on how we move forward in terms of this intervention but we do think that um, and, and the, the, the current uh, mandatory financial recovery plan that is in place needs to be reviewed um, so that uh, it then takes into account some of the challenges we made and becomes an overarching plan upon which all of us must then contribute our support so that we're able to deal with the priority areas that uh, uh, still uh, uh, remain in the municipality. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can we now move to Seti Bank, District Municipality? Executive Mayor, uh, Councillor Maloka. Uh, thank you, Chairperson, and greetings to everyone in the meeting. Let me also acknowledge the presence of the uh, Deputy Minister. Uh, Chair, uh, our presentation will be done by the MM Mati. I'm, I'm with her and the team of Mfulini. Thank you so much. Uh, over to you, MM. Honorable members of the portfolio committee, uh, I greet you this morning. Uh, if I may be allowed to share the presentation. Um, thank you, Chair. Uh, as the executive mayor has uh, introduced, and the presentation by Cocta, uh, AG, and Salga are touching on the items that we will be uh, presenting. Uh, as a district, we are a district of three local municipalities. That's Mfoleni, Midval, and Lesedi. Truth be told that uh, we are having challenges within Mfoleni as it is put under uh, distress. Um, as per the municipal mandate, uh, I think my colleagues who spoke before me has, has touched on this. Uh, Salga, uh, chapter seven of what the mandate is of the municipality. That's the context of what the presentation will be focusing on. As working within Mfoleni, assisting Mfoleni uh, within the premise of the constitutional uh, um, mandate. Our biggest issue chair is issues of uh, powers and functions, which uh, I think I, I will cover in, in, in the presentation that as a district, we do have functions that are to be performed by us as a district uh, in working together with our provinces, national and local municipalities. In this context, we can counting as two districts within counting uh, with the limitations of uh, what we of what we mm -hmm. are uh, enabled uh, to do. In as far as the powers and functions of what we are doing, the functions within uh, the district briefly is that we are providing the, the, the air pollution, fire, tourism, just for the context for, for members to know the areas that we are, that we are uh, working on and, and within which context are we helping uh, our local municipalities, especially in Fuleni, in this, uh, in this uh, constant. So the, uh, the, the slides are showing the areas that we are 
performing uh, as a district. And we are also doing the licensing agency on agency basis for the for the Department of Transport, the information management agency basis. We are working very close with our local municipalities uh, in this context, the public safety, the theaters, sport and recreation, and the heritage and, and museums. Uh, I'm highlighting this because these are the areas in, into which Mflani it is benefiting as a district when we well, when we roll out our functions. We are coordinating the HIV and AIDS uh, program, uh, the, the, the youth centers, the social development, uh, communication center, this disaster management, which I, I think Kokta has actually spoken deeply on, on our role and what we have played uh, in this context as we are working with, with our municipalities. A brief historical background on this space, it, this showcase uh, the areas on the functions uh, that we are performing as an, I think the the earlier slides were were focusing mainly on the on, on the areas. But as as a district, the most uh, uh, affected areas is that we are uh, we used to uh, to to be dependent on the RSC levies that we used to collect, and since that that was discontinued, as a district we do not have a, a revenue. We are dependent on the equitable share. And that is extremely limiting uh, any other uh, no extended function that we have uh, to perform. And those that we are doing, uh, we are also operating within an unfunded mandate context, um, and meaning we, we, we stretch the limited resources that we have in order to assist with NIF. So issue, issues of powers and, and functions, members of the committee, I believe strongly that uh, it's a context that we've discussed with Salga, with Kokta, uh, that we we believe that it needs to be revisited uh, in order to make districts to be somehow uh, uh, functional so with a sense of uh, revenue in order to do more than what we are doing in in assisting our local municipalities. Briefly ab about the state of the district, uh, we are in an unfunded budget context, uh, meaning we are at the worst case that we are at seventy five percent of the salary bill. Uh, we owe the Department of Transport 126 million, which is a going concern. We, we got an unqualified uh, audit. We have vacancies at top three. I'm, I'm, I'm raising these vacancies because Mflin is actually in the same state that uh, we are in, in a process now uh, to fill this top layer uh, executive uh, positions. Ourselves and Mflin, we are in the same uh, in, in, in the same state. We have a sense of corruption that we are dealing with, with the Hawks at our licensing center, especially at the Fanabil Park licensing center. The matter is actually being reported and is currently being uh, investigated. We have an uh, office shortage uh, space, meaning we have employees without physical offices, but we are having, we are moving into the open plan space where we are accommodating them. Issue of uh, the, the, the agency space for um for 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 the point of transport this is the other pattern that we also uh was saying in order us to do more i think we need to revisit this we are responsible for all functions and expenses around licensing centers and we then pay the point of transport 80 percent of the all collection that we have done when we are actually responsible for um employee costs and all other operational costs and the logistics part and um, this these are there are some of the unfunded areas that we have uh, to deal with which uh, our locals are benefiting in the space but as i'm saying it is just worse the the one other factor is that we find ourselves that we are having to deal with we with have to six percent employee increase every year when our also only source of income, which is equitable share, is only in increasing by 2.7%. And that makes it, uh, you know, that had been happening for the past 12 years. So this is uh, an overall state of what uh, uh, a district that we are speaking about, which is City Bank, is actually in. Um, in order to get to exactly what are we doing with the uh, MFLN, I will be brief, Chair. Um, we, we have governance support that we provide to Enflin, meaning that they joined Mass Forum, joined MMs, uh, joined uh, Whippery, Seafoods Forum, 
the, we, we participate in the city bank sewer scheme process, the political steering committees thereof, the technical teams within the other city. The DDM model that we are in now is actually leading in, in the process of making sure that the issues are being tabled and issues are dealt with collectively, including all the stakeholders, uh, private sector is also uh, participating in in that space. We have a one plan that is directing the, the entire uh, district. So all four locals and uh, in the district are onto one plan that we are leading and that we are we are rolling out. And we provide the IGR platform uh, for the for, 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 for the municipality and uh, um, all other three municipalities are participating in this space. So it is an all uh, inclusive uh, approach that we are dealing with. Chair, in as far as it was responded earlier on the emergency management in the recent disaster that we had of, uh, of, of, of the floods, we have put work very close with Enfolene and we, we, with the district and we are providing resources in that extent as well. So we are, we have been assisting implementing that. Issue of the activation of, gen, of, of, of operation centers, we were also assisting in that and we were leading that because we, the operation was actually central within the uh, district. Other areas of support on the community safety, we are coordinating the, the community safety forum within the uh, local. And this is one of the most active uh, forum chair, if, if I may indicate. And the operations that are done jointly with the with the, with, the, with the SAPS is presenting a, a you know a safety and security space within uh, within the region. On the recreational space, we do we also coordinate um, on the social coercion the world games in that regard. This other key area chair, the road asset management system that we are leading uh, we are assisting uh, influencing in this regard in as far as the rules are concerned to make sure that uh, we, we we capture what needs to be done when it's done and the assets of influence it's been it's also being being captured and that data is actually shared uh, with the national department of of, of of transport this then indicates what's done, what we have, what was on uh, uh, to be done. We do have an uh, intense that we have, that we have employed this instance who are professional engineers who are working with us at the district level uh, to, to, to roll out this, uh, this, uh, this function. On the strategic planning chair, we are consolidating the one plan as indicated, and we, we make sure that all uh, projects and programs that needs to be uh, rolled out within the district are identified, the milestones are set and they are monitored. So we are working very close with the Enfolin also in this uh, in this case. This is the this is uh, the special planning that we are working on. The areas in in dots that shows specifically what is it that we are doing uh, within the uh, the uh, the planning. The geographical information system, the, the, the GIS that we have, uh, it is linked also to the national database, and we are working very closely. Rolling out of the Spluma uh, as a district, uh, we are overseeing uh, that the principles of Spluma are fully implemented within the area. On the areas of LED and tourism, uh, we do uh, play a role with Enflin very close on making sure that the tourism sector within the area it is fully operational monitored and and it is functional the agricultural support chair we do have a fresh produce market and um, that is uh, intended to to support and and supply the entire region and uh, we are also working very close with them for in making sure that the we, we, we grow the area. We will, we will soon be revisiting uh, our growth and development uh, strategy, which was we, 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 which was last done the past eight years. So we will be revisiting that. But we are working very close with the Enfolene also in the state. In as far as human settlement is concerned, Chair, as I'm drawing to close, 
Um, we are doing the facilitation of housing projects in the Mflani area. We respond to pinned matters with regards to implementation of human settlement projects and and programs. This is the this is the coordination space that, uh, as a district, uh, we are playing, and uh, we we do have challenges around the space because of the you know because of the realities that we have of uh, invasions and you know that part uh, database of people to move into houses are they the real people or not those challenges as I experienced elsewhere we are also experiencing them this side and the health and environmental services the HIV dot dot to dot program on behalf of the province we are doing that uh, the, the the grant is received. We then uh, um, have two uh, plus minus two hundred uh, door to door coordinators that we are we are running this program uh, to educate the, the public. We are leading with that. Uh, so all other local municipalities are participating in this space because uh, because within their wards, this is where we have people to actually roll out this. We are we are leading on the air quality management service. Which benefits the entire uh, uh, district. Chair, comfortably that we do, uh, we do present fines where industries are not cooperating, and this process it is moving uh, also very well in that state. Under municipal health services, we are coordinating this with with our locals being the implementing level. Uh, we are having challenge here because the, the the resource that we receive to roll out this. It, it doesn't come anywhere near what is required. And uh, some of the locals are actually giving us a hard time when they have to sign the service level agreement that they are saying, that they are saying we are not paying them enough for them to actually roll this uh, process. So that, that's one other challenge uh, that we have to do. But the municipal health services, it is happening in the region. Uh, we are coordinating that. Uh, is, it is it is part of this with the biggest numbers and the biggest cost uh, in this process, uh, but we, it is uh, rolled out. As I conclude, Chair, under the challenges that we have, uh, truth be told that uh, we, in, the, in, in our intervention uh, on the operational matters, there's a lack of uh, responsiveness uh, from the side of uh, M. Fulene. We believe, as we discussed this, um, we are not the only people who are intervening to making things happen within Enfulet. So you'll find that at the timelines where we have to engage, uh, Salga is here, AG is here, Province is here. You know, there's quite a lot that, that, that is happening uh, within Enfulet. So we also have to, to, to strive to find our space in order to help them. Issues of the joint meetings that, that, that we have, we have, uh, we have, uh, struggle for attendance from the side of our colleagues uh, within Enfulene. When we when we get a chance Chair, to have proper discussions with, with Enfulene, we feel that is not too much disclosure that that has been shared uh, between the district and Enfulene in this uh, context, something that we believe that we have uh, and that, that we have to deal with. On the other hand, we are also demanding from Enfulene to also renovate some of the buildings that we are renting from them. But within the context of their financial strain, I believe strongly that they do have challenges in that. So we, we are also being victims of some of the areas in as far as the financial challenges within Enfulene are concerned. We believe that they'll be appointing the, the municipal manager soon. Um, they are currently having an acting MM, the Tentuli, who is doing very well so far. Uh, the acting executive director's chair, as I indicated earlier, they are in the process of making sure that they appoint. So we, we will soon be appointing. I think by this month, we, we, will, we, we will have appointed some in some positions. I believe the same for Enfulene. So in that context, we will be having executive directors appointed on both sides. On that note, Chair, I thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, can we now uh, talk to the people we are about? Uh, M. Fulen, uh, Executive Mayor, Councillor Sipo, over to you.
Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, Chair. Greetings to yourself. Greetings to the DM, Honorable Pikes Dow, the Salva Chairperson, uh, Mr. Jongizi, and the team, yes, Salva, and all other dignitaries and colleagues that are present in this meeting, Chair. Thank you very much for giving us an opportunity as an influence to come and present on the strategic things that we require the portfolio committee to have a clue on them and also to assist us on that. And Chair, without any, any waste of time, I'm also joined in this meeting from Mfuleni by the acting MM, Mr. April Induli, and also the acting CFO, Ntatem Faraleni Masianoka, and which Babuntuli will be then taking us through the Mfuleni presentation. And then let me hand over to him so that he can continue. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much, uh, Honorable Executive Mayor. Good morning, Chair. Um, good morning to the, to the DM and to everyone, all protocol observe. Chair, without waste of time, if can be given the rights, I mean, to share. Okay. Chair, Chair can you see my presentation? Yes, we can yes, see. Okay, I want to put it on the slide, slide mode. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, this is a table of contents, uh, which will entail the production uh, profile of the uh, influence of municipality, the background, establishment of the fifth administration, uh, council committees, um, impact, uh, revenue collection, uh, debt on to and by the municipality, UIF uh, expenditure by the municipality and challenges faced by the municipality and the impact on the service delivery. So, Chair, I want to very much on this slide. This is a composition how our council is constituted of 90 uh, elected councillors, 45 wards councillors, and 45 proportional representative uh, councillors. And also, this one is a democratic. Democratic profile of the municipality. I want to very much. My colleagues, they already presented on yeah on the profile. I'll go straight to the access to basic where I will start. Uh, formal dwellings is eighty five point four percent, and uh, access to uh, toilets uh, or sanitation ninety three point eight percent, and uh, access to uh, pipe water ninety nine point two percent, and those households that are connected with electricity ninety four point one percent. And uh, formal refusal, uh, waste refusal, ninety-three point eight percent. Chair, our colleagues, uh, provincial, um, they already indicated that uh, around twenty eighteen, uh, Southern Executive Council, uh, where it took a decision to invoke Section one three nine of the Constitution of the Republic of of South Africa, um, uh, and the intervention uh, was focusing on three areas. It was supply chain management, finance, and infrastructure service delivery. And at that time, the challenges that were faced by the municipality were the following. It was a political and administrative instability that were affecting the well function of the municipality, which almost led to its collapse. Uh, the poor financial management, uh, the credit control, which, which led to the deteriorating of municipality and the financial health, as is indicated by the auditor I mean, general on the, on the earlier presentation. And the poor, poor governance and the lack of political yeah, oversight, poor communication with communities and the stakeholders. And there's a declining, was a declining of manufacturing sector, resulting into high unemployment yeah, in, yeah, in the area. And uh, it's indicated by the uh, provincial COCTA uh, that the intervention has elapsed uh, last year, uh, uh, last calendar year on the 31st of August, 2022. And Establishment of administration, I won't come much. I mean, as all of us, we, we are aware that after the election that were held on the 1st of November, and then there was a new administration that it, yeah, it came into, uh, into, it came into power to administer the, 
uh, the municipality. In terms of council committees, uh, the following council committees have been established and are all functional. The municipality has a municipal public account committee, risk committee, audit committee, mayoral committee, executive committee, ethics committee, and efficiency committee, gender youth, and people living with disability. Including this, also want to mention that the local labor forum is also functional. And under impact, impact is functional. It's for the full time chairperson that has been appointed. Uh, up, their meetings are held regularly at, uh, twice per quarter. And the oversight function is, is at its minimum capacity building and thing organized uh, for MPEC members. As we had uh, uh, yeah, earlier, the Salka has already conducted I mean, a workshop uh, the week before last uh, with, uh, with MPEC. Uh, currently, the MPEC is conducting oversight and investigation on the UIWF. Currently, conducting oversight on annual report for 2021 2022. And MPEC is holding um, executive accountable administrative capacity must be strengthened. Forensic investigation report is, is reported at council and before MPEC, followed by the establishment of financial disciplinary report to deal with 11 cases from the investigation report. The cases are at back in council waiting for availability of commissioner uh, to finalize. In terms of revenue, uh, Chair, yes, we are struggling on the, um, yeah, on the collection. Um, at the end of December, the collection was at 77% against what we've budgeted at 83.5%. So we're very low. Uh, the treasury benchmark we supposed to be uh, collecting at 95%. This is a table chair just to indicate how the movement yeah, of, of collection uh, yeah, from July until December, that came to 77%. And July, it was 46, uh, that's 85. September, 105. And in October, 70. In November, we've dropped uh, to 58. Yeah, in December, we pick up again 95. But the bottom line is it came to 77%, which is, is lower than we've been budgeted for. And this shows a slide that indicates uh, our creditors, uh, uh, bulk electricity. These are the big, this is a big ticket to where we, we uh, in the main, we owe ESCOM uh, 6.1 billion. And the second uh, biggest creditor is um, is yeah is Renault, seven hundred and fifty one million. So in total, uh, is uh, six point eight million. There are also also other small creditors. So this is distribution loss. Also, uh, uh, AG did indicate yeah on the losses how it affect the municipality. Twenty twenty one, we were at twenty one point eight seven, and then was an increase of 23 percent, and water. 2021, 57%, and by end of June, uh, we're at 63.7% on the distribution losses. So this is, this is a result of high discipline that are due uh, to unmetered household and the aging infrastructure. And, and the water losses have increased compared to previous uh, periods. Uh, electricity loss amount 1.3 billion. And the water service, uh, there's a low collection rate here on water services. And the water service is trading at the loss. The reduction loss was a target in the budgeting, in the budget funding plan, and was not achieved. So this is the end of December. Electricity losses has dropped slightly uh, as compared to uh, to end of financial year June, uh, where it was 23. Now it went to 22.2. Water revenue losses have increased uh, compared to June. It now is at 65.4 percent. So this, yeah, these are the amounts or debtors that are owed uh, to the municipality. Municipality is also owed uh, 7.2 billion. Of this 7.2 billion in the next slide, in the pie chart, 73% that is owed to the municipality is, is, is household, and the 24% yeah, is commercials, and the 3% is open of states. So there are intervention program that the municipality uh, has established uh, the first one. The municipality has established the credit control uh, revenue war room uh, and is sitting weekly where all the revenue are pledging and presenting their plans on how they will improve the revenue uh, collection. Uh, the municipality has commenced with an aggressive implementation of credit control by disconnecting non paid non paying customers. The municipality is implementing credit control by encouraging members of the community who are unemployed to come forward and register in the indigent. Uh, Register and and for those who are unable to pay, 
and the full amount to come forward to, to, to make payment arrangement. And municipality has appointed a panel of service provider for installation of water meters for the improvement of revenue collection. As you have indicated here that in the main, the high distribution losses are as a result of unmetered uh, household. The municipality is in the process of finalizing the panel of expect for, for on the revenue enhancement initiative. The municipality has appointed the debt collectors and attorneys to deal with the revenue collection and interdict from customers who are lodging yeah, dispute. So there are so many disputes that the municipality is facing. Hence, we want to have uh, the attorneys who are expect on dealing with the revenue collection because we've got court, we've got court orders where suppliers they are taking to municipality Armenia to court and um, they're receiving award. After they receive the award, they are consuming electricity uh, with, with, yeah, without any payment. That is it. It is a bearing effect on the municipality in terms of the revenue collection. UIF uh, W expenditure, financial year 2019-20, unauthorized expenditure is 1.6 billion. Uh, financial year 2021, unauthorized expenditure is 1.1 billion. Financial year 2021, as also as was presented by the Auditor General, it has increased unauthorized expenditure 2.7 billion. Challenges on economic development and, and special, with high unemployment rate in the area, limited health infrastructure to support the priority strategy, catalytic and development and investment. So our infrastructure is aged. So there are many challenges. I mean, it's was village, uh, pipes are collapsing. So we find it difficult, I mean, to attract uh, other, other, other investment or investors that will come to the municipality because, because of the lack of commitment. Lack of technical capacity in the clusters is limiting its potential to fully execute its mandate. But budgetary constraint, especially in executing most of the specialized work in terms of the sourcing pro, uh, professional consulting services in the area of economic development and real estate. Inadequacy of tool of trades, computers, plotters, safety equipment, and fleet. Ill discipline of poor, Ill -discipline, poor employee moral and poor work ethic, poor rental stock maintenance and management. So, how are we going to turn around uh, uh, the situation? The, the Fulani, economy has been on a decline, resulting into high rate of unemployment, poverty, and inequality. So the municipality has adopted the local economic development strategy to revive the economy revitalization of the manufacturing sector, strategy entail the establishment of special economic zone. Wow. And there's, there's a project on, for R, on R82 road expansion, construction of A174 interchange that is created uh, opportunities for local community and SMEs. And fully, we are working together with Houting Provincial Government and the Department of Trade and Industry and competition to revive economic economy of the area and avail up to hectares of land to the Val SZ company. So the plan is to design the Val River City Special Economic Zone are, are at advanced stage. Val SZ company has been registered. So the turnaround, I mean, to continue, we have the turnaround as a municipality where we will introduce use of technology and innovation to improve business efficiency and turnaround time in approval house plannings, uh, undertaking business plan management system to reduce the turnaround time. Because uh, Chair will realize that we are taking too long. I mean, with the manual uh, processing of approval plans, so we're in the process of, of approaching a, a, a system that will reduce uh, the turnaround time. And also uh, the policy for the informal trading has been completed and we and will serve at, at various uh, committees before taken into public participation. So we are in the process of adopting a pilot project to recruit internal staff and provide training and temporary appointment of bylaws officers. Um, the municipality is working together with Val SZ company to establish and develop local owned cooperative interested in the agriculture and agro processing uh, facility, uh, facilitate access to the market opportunities. So the, Around imp yeah, implementation plan on rainwater debt. So we are continuously engaging uh, with rainwater. So we're in the process of concluding partnership agreement in rainwater uh, on water, on demand uh, and demand water conservation, dealing among other things, initiative to collect rainwater and revenue and a collaboration with rainwater and help them as well to deal with the problem of water losses. So we have signed uh, an agreement uh, that will deal with the uh, uh, historical debt 
So where we have agreed that quarterly there will be a payment of 75 million until the end of 20, 2024. The municipality and Renota have come to an arrangement where the municipality will lose ESCOM electricity account of said the municipality account on water to pay the remaining balance will, will be paid by the municipality. So what we do, uh, where rainwater has got facility in the area, we've got an agreement that uh, whatever is owed to the municipality in terms of electricity will be offset it, and the remainder of the balance will be paid by the municipality. So the turnaround implementation plan strive to pay current account and pay the account on, on Fort February. I mean, this was done. We're negotiating for payment of court judgment of 1.3 billion over the period of, of, of four years while ESCOM wants payment. ESCOM wanted us to pay the 1.3 billion. Of, I mean, within two years, uh, it was very stiff. We were un unable to sign that agreement. We negotiated uh, that these debts should be paid. Uh, within four years, uh, uh, quarterly, uh, but the challenge, I mean, uh, with this one uh, is the is the interest. I mean, we have received uh, 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 the agreement that is supposed to be signed for the acknowledgement of debt, but we are still negotiating because uh, ESCOM is charging us a prime plus two point five percent on the interest. And uh, over and above this, uh, on the amount that we owe, there's a uh, three point eight billion of which the municipality were negotiating that we, we want to pay it, I mean, within 15 years, because ESCOM was proposing that uh, this debt should be paid, I mean, in 72 months. But if you look at the quantum of the amount that is owed to, you know, to ESCOM, it is very, very, uh, very huge. So we are proposing 15 years. And the other thing, uh, Chair, that affects us uh, on, the, um, on the current account, uh, on the payment of ESCOM, when you pay the current account because it, it comes with the interest on that current account, uh, just to give you an example, um, at the end of uh, December, uh, the, current, the current account came with a 50%, I mean, 50 million uh, interest, and uh, for the month of February, uh, came with uh, 45 uh, million year interest. So that's, that's a big money which make it difficult you know, for the municipality. Uh, to uh, to enable to meet the commitment, I mean, of the current account. So we are negotiating with ESCOM to say, ESCOM, can you can you set aside, uh, you know, the you know the, you know the interest, so that one we are able to meet the commitment, you know, you know, for a period, uh, whereby now we can prove ourselves that we are in, we are able to meet the current account. The other challenge is there uh, with the uh, meeting of the current account. Uh, chair, we are working on the all agreements, uh, whereby. If you check the payment of ESCOM is within 30 days, as also was presented by uh, by AG. But the, the cash conversion uh, cycle, there's a mismatch there because if we work on the ratios, I mean, on the annual financial statement of the municipality, you find that the municipality is able to collect, uh, uh, on average, is able to collect within 45 days. And the 45 days, I mean, it elapsed whereby you already exceeded uh, the 30 days. Where, we're trying to negotiate as well. I mean, yeah, with ESCOM, but we are, we are not winning we are onto that one. So but, but, yeah, we have engaged uh, you know, with Salka, with the province, so that we can maybe engage with ESCOM. The other challenges on, on the payment is those companies where there was a court order giving, to give example, like Cape Gate, that they are paying ESCOM uh, directly. They're not paying the municipality. And with that, it also causes a challenge because some of the companies that are using the old, the old rate, you invoice them, when they invoice them and then they work on their own tariffs that to pay ESCOM. And that tariffs, it makes them to pay a lower amount, uh, you, know, you know, to ESCOM. Also, we seek I mean, an intervention here on that one. And on the financial viability, the finance uh, of municipality impedes many service delivery program and its ability to honor financial obligation. It's a high losses of, of water and electricity, high debts to, uh, to, you know, to ESCOM, rent high cost, maintaining aging infrastructure continue to be major a contribution to, uh, of the budget deficit. The above is attracted um, uh, in a negative audit opinion. Uh, we have received a qualified opinion and a 50% uh, of household and less than um, 4,000 share. As much as you want to increase, I mean, you know, uh, by tariff, but you also having a challenge whereby you've got a, I mean, a huge number of, of indigent and, um, and high unemployment. So the collection rate at midterm has indicated earlier 77% uh, of the target of 83%. And the turnaround implementation plan uh, towards audit opinion, we've established uh, the operation uh, audit, uh, operation clean audit structure 
that compromise that comprising it is the managers and as the managers and the meetings are held weekly. The HGS identified these 96 meters of emphasis and excellence have been developed on all 96 meters of emphasis by the HG. So we also intensify the registration of indigent households. The other turn around on process of acquiring integrated management system, which incorporates performance, risk, budget, financial management, order to improve the performance of the municipality. Currently, we are using manual on the, um, on performance and yeah, in the risk and the internal audit. Turn around on turn around implementation plan on the revenue collection. Uh, we have indicated earlier that we've established uh, the war room uh, that is sitting weekly, scaling up of uh, enforcement of credit control uh, and reduction of of local connection. Monthly reporting on progress and effective necessary intervention where necessary. Installation of 10,000 water meters and metered a household for over the period of three years. And then there's also a, a challenges on institutional stability, lack of administrative leadership because of high vacancies rate in the senior management and middle management, high vacancy rate uh, throughout the organization, budget constraint on filling vacancies, high rate of labor litigation. Uh, this is also a problem for a high rate of labor litigation at the municipality. Uh, turn around. Uh, on this filling of, of senior uh, management vacancies, municipal manager um, interviews, uh, vetting, assessment, it has been completed here. So uh, the process will be completed by the 31st of March uh, in the next council sitting. The executive director of community services, uh, the, 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 uh, the position was advertised, uh, was closed, assessment were done, and the vetting is completed. So it's also expected to serve in the next council sitting together with the chief uh, audit ex with the chief audit yeah, executive we like to announce chair earlier on the on the one of the presenter i think to said to us outstanding on the appointment of chief risk officer chief chief risk officer has been appointed uh, chair it's only chief audit, audit executive officer that is still outstanding but the process it, it has been concluded on the executive director uh, corporate uh, services and economic development and planning post were advertised and closed and the short listing i mean it has been completed uh, the, the next stage is to set an interviews uh, uh, chair. Manager assistance legal service position is advertised and closed. Uh, sh uh, short listing, it is started with the assistant manager, so it will follow with the assistant man manager legal services. There's challenges basic on the basic services and infrastructure. Uh, the infrastructure is age, resulting in high maintenance costs, lack of human resource and key manager, managerial position, lack of reliable fleet and equipment, uh, lack of effective communication with clients with absence of call center, lack of tools of trade and lack of, of material industry the service delivery, delay in payment of services what, uh, of service provider due to cash flow challenges, lack of master plans due to the current and unlocking of the future development and continuous electricity outage and insufficient maintenance and electricity yeah, infrastructure. So the turnaround yeah, on this one, is the improvement of revenue question will be critical in assisting the municipality to procure sufficient tool of trade, increase revenue collection in order to improve the municipal cash flow, and enable the payment of service provider. Also, we want to minimize the usage of contractors uh, in maintenance of the municipal infrastructure. So continue with the turnaround, I mean, on the human capital, municipality is working on partnership with Icon Bridge, uh, in infrastructure South Africa to build paving roads from the material uh, to be donated by Icon Peak. Executive Mayor uh, met with Icon Peak, uh, they established a partnership where we'll get the uh, uh, bricks, over, and then what we'll do, the uh, the final wearing cost, I mean, of the, of the, of the road, uh, we'll, we'll do the, uh, it will be brick paving. So panel of consultants uh, appointed to provide additional capacity to the municipality as and when needed manager and assistant manager project management unit position were advertised and those. So there was also a shortage of staff on the, on the PMU, but the position for the assistant and the, and the manager, it, it, it has been done. And the shortlisting is also completed. There was also a position of the senior technician project management unit. Uh, the, uh, the position was advertised and closed. Also the interview was conducted and the position of the, of, yeah, of the technician Position were advertised and closed, and the shortlisting was completed, and the interviews were done on the 7th of February. So HR currently is busy with the vetting uh, process. 
and on the lacking of master plan through MIG, uh, 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 the municipality has set aside, I mean, at the budget of 5% asset master plan, water and sanitation master plan, water and service development plan, uh, road to motor master plan, and asset of road to motor master plan. So I would like to, in, uh, uh, to, to indicate that on the asset master plan, water and sanitation, the uh, double SDP, the water service development plan, yeah, the project is underway, is expected to be completed uh, uh, by end of December. So on the road and stormwater master plan, the true uh, uh, cocktail province has appointed uh, uh, SICI to assist with the development you know, you know, of document for the water conservation and demand management, solid waste I mean, at disposal and electricity master plan. And also the national treasury through neighborhood uh, development grant, we are implementing the civil things uh, present plan. Uh, on the water side, we've got also an intervention uh, national government in intervention through Section 63 of Water Service Act dealing with water and the sewer spillages. On the performance of make for the past five years, uh, you will see 2017-18, it was 100%, and 2018-19, 79%. Uh, that's where the problem started, where the bidding uh, committees uh, committees were not sitting, then we've dropped 2019-20. There was no um, a project on the ground. Uh, the service delivery was impacted hugely. Then we started to pick up uh, on the 2020-2021, where we have spent 44%, and by 21, 22, we managed to spend 80%. Um, last year, December, we, we are, as, as our previous colleagues have presented, that we have dropped uh, a bit uh, because of the attachment we are, we are of the account. We couldn't transact anything. And that has an impact because also the service provider will know they have to stop uh, performance uh, on the ground due to unemployment, uh, you know, uh, non payment was the huge amount they were already been spent on the project. So, the challenges the, the turnaround implementation plan on environmental management planning, uh, procurement of internal fleet uh, compactors, uh, opening of new landfill site is the lifespan of all landfill site came to an end. We've got two lenses here, yeah, two landfill site uh, that the space uh, we, we, we don't have enough space uh, in, yeah, anymore, wild drift and Boitsepi. But we've received a license for the development of Yakani landfill site uh, uh, through GDAT. Yeah, the license has been received by the municipality. Collection of household improved from the 54% in the last financial year to 81% by the last second quarter at the end of December 2022. The attachment of vehicles had a negative impact on, on the waste collection. Last year, December, just at the beginning of, yeah, of December, through uh, ESCOM. Uh, sheriff attached uh, our vehicles, so we're un unable to be more productive on the on the waste collections. Uh, but since uh, the upliftment of the account, we've managed to pay uh, ESCOM and the sheriff. Now we are continuing with the uh, collection of waste. Currently, developing of waste integrated strategy for long-term solution on the waste management plans in the municipality. However, we have purchased a new fleet with the help of Houting uh, Province uh, during uh, Section 139B interventions. Additional fleet helped to improve the house collection and cleaning dumping site. Intervention assisted to procure nine compactors, nine tippers, uh, six hook trucks, uh, three tailbees, and three front loaders. And the following was done uh, on, the, on the intervention of electricity. I mean, these are the projects that were done. Uh, four power transformers with the range from 5 MVA to 20 MVA has been refurbished. Three substations have been, have been furnished with new 11 KVA switch gears substation. Uh, four kilometers of cables from Sunland Park substation to FRP1 substation has been replaced. 12 distribution pillar boxes have been replaced in Fairness and CBD. Application of funding will be done for outstanding houses that require electrific ele yeah, electrification. Working with revenue on the replacing faulty meters. Okay, so I'll come back to you. Sure. The municipality is considering the exploring and possibility of electricity. Sorry. Honorable on, on Kalip. Your hand is up. Oh, or is it a historical hand? Okay, let's proceed, uh, uh, MM. Thank you, Chair. Um, on infrastructure, uh, municipal infrastructure grant, uh, I've indicated that we've improved the, from the last financial year, the last year, end of June, we were, uh, last financial year, end of June, we were at 80%. Capital expenditure uh, committee has been established. So we have established a capex on all the uh, program uh, and projects that are established uh, to capital 
uh, uh, expenditure. So we're monitoring that uh, every every week to ensure that we improve their performance. And the process to develop a existing infrastructure master plan is being undertaken through, through MHE funding. So these are other projects uh, uh, that are planned uh, to, uh, yeah, to deal with the challenges uh, of, yeah, of electricity in the financial year 2022-2023, finalization of, of procurement of tools and testing equipment for technician maintenance program, replacement installation of over 8,000 electricity meters, uh, refurbishment of Munich substation, uh, Powerville main substation, third substation, uh, 2 by 20 MVA transformers, and VESCO substation. So from June uh, to December, electricity losses was reduced by was reduced by 1.3% in the second quarter. So the municipality has adopted a program to reduce electricity losses and the implementation will be closely monitored. The municipality we are complying with NERSA license requirement by budgeting 6% of the total electricity income for maintenance of electrical infrastructure. But it also got challenges uh, on the road and storm water, uh, the portals, aging of road infrastructure and, and collapsed of the motor system, uh, especially now, which we also considering we know the climate change, the, it becomes even worse where there's flashlights. I mean, our storm water, they're unable to uh, to keep up, uh, uh, we know, uh, we know the floods, the, the, the retention period it, is taking longer than it is expected. So the lack of maintenance due to budget constraint, including a patient of portals, vandalism of road infrastructure by community when there's protest, water leakages and sewer spillage damage on the road infrastructure. So the turnaround implementation, municipality has established a partnership with private sector to maintain some of the roads to the surrounding uh, areas, such as uh, uh, Metal, Northwest University. We're also adopting some roads and social PTY uh, limited. We will train our staff on portal patching and explore a possibility to partner with the insurance companies. Some major economic roads have been received by the province. Municipality will procure additional material and equipment once the finance improves to ensure adequate maintenance of road and storm water. So what we there are also capital projects that we're doing, you know, on the road to improve uh, our, our road network, uh, such as upgrading of Mushuasho Road to phase two A1, funded uh, through NTPG, uh, construction of Fanskalvik, funded through MIG, and the construction of Lamin and Umzim um, Vubuto, uh, Mushuasho Road and Pitseng to Uranium Street. And then a total of 28.8 kilometers of gravel road is maintained. There's a construction of Lakeside Block A, uh, 1,382 meters of storm water canals maintained in all region. Monata Street, we have done 241 meter of milling and resealing. On the road, uh, 599 uh, meter of milling and resealing. Uh, Sibia Road, 192 meters of milling and resealing and 40 square meters of patchwork. Adams Road, 123.75 square meter of patch road. Another health and social developments, Lack of compliance with municipal dialogues, dialogues by informal traders, restaurant owners, lack of sports and recreational facility, uh, lack of sufficient health facility and medication due to limited resources. And also there's a high rate of alcohol and drug abuse, high rate of unemployment, poverty and inequality, high rate of gender uh, based violence, people living with disability. So the turnaround plan on this one, the municipal conducted 100 people. 1,377 inspections were conducted on environmental health norms and standards as related to food premises and inspection waste disposal. In 207 indigent and proper perils were attended to uh, in the financial year 2021-22. So we've also initiated community education and awareness of municipal bylaws, health and social development. Challenges uh, with community services. Uh, community services has been the mostly affected cluster in terms of allocation budget on competing service delivery interests, the lack of maintenance of parks and, com and community facilities due to budget constraint, the lack of pruning of trees, maintaining of open spaces, sufficient space uh, on areas, uh, lack of maintenance of supporting arts, cultural assets, and lack of capital investment uh, in building new facilities, and skill development across uh, uh, sporting codes, uh, non adherence to, to law and order by motorists and, and patrons, Rate of crime such as hijacking, ATM, bombing, marking, housebreaking, and the lack of sufficient space for burials, and the lack of sporting arts and cultural facility. So, how we we are we, we intending to turn around the municipality has put the land uh, next to Furukong and, and West Side with the intention to have a new cemetery site. Uh, municipality, we are partnering with the private sector to build new facilities and sports facilities in Steel Park built by Vitro Piling Company. 
So on municipalities to invite community members and organizations with interest and capacity to submit proposal for this to have further deterioration of the, yeah, of the asset. So on public safety, uh, the number of community safety programs and joint operation with other law enforcers are conducted regularly by law enforcement with staff within state internal recruited officials to tackle the law lawlessness in, in the municipal area. And the turnaround on the public safety as part of the creative, uh, livable environment public safety undertook the following uh, activities as uh, road safety promotional campaigns were conducted in various schools, social crime prevention conducted, uh, crime prevention through environmental design. This is five days of activism and youth crime prevention alongside the rest of the stakeholders. Uh, conduct self-directed operation. There's also a joint a joint pilot enforcement operation with various municipal departments, such as traffic department, property section, waste management section. So also a joint operation in identify high-risk areas in support of the South African police services. So the challenges under water and sanitation, um, as I indicated earlier, on water and sanitation, we, are, we have received the intervention um, on section 63 through Water Service Act 108 of 1997. And the other intervention was the where provincial executive yeah, committee invoked section 1391B and, and 5A. So the implementing the implementing agent agreement between the Water and Department of Water Sanitation was signed on the 5th of October 2021. All stakeholders signed with the exception of COCTA. So currently, Implementation agent, I mean, through section 63 is rainwater. So the turnaround, I mean, on the strategic uh, uh, plan, uh, implementation by, by what uh, is Can we come closer to concluding? Thank you, thank you, thank you Chair. Um, the turnaround plan on water and sanitation, operation and maintenance and resource uh, approval protocol, which includes the following uh, ELM cell approved organogram, rainwater and ELM. We convene to asset implementation. These are water and sanitation, which is also part of the of the intervention by rainwater. And um, then around the pension plan, water and sanitation advocates in October 22, rainwater in, in collaboration with the city bank, is proposed at the briefing session with all district one councillors from the local municipality. So in, in conclusion, Chair, we are saying after, ex after extensive consultation, both internally and externally to the local municipality, the financial recovery plan developed, a, developed by National Treasury in Canada in December when it comes to below conclusion on ELM. ELM is of amplified consequence of financial losses and infrastructure failure, and without necessary financial resource targeted at the fundamental, it is almost impossible to recover to a sustainable municipality. Also move away from short-term and reactionary planning into long-term stable and sustainable framework. Hence, the municipality with support from provincial and national government prioritize the development of a long-term spatial infrastructure service delivery implementation plan and financial plan that is realistic and achievable and based on sound socioeconomic analysis. Therefore, problems in ELM must look beyond what the eyes can see. Thank you very much uh, for the opportunity uh, to present. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, to all the presenters, and uh, I think now we will allow honorable members to engage with the presentations. Uh, I'll be guided by your hands as I see them. Uh, um, I can see Honorable Kalipi, Honorable Taza, and Honorable Pumzi, uh, Honorable Opperman. Can we follow that order? Honorable Kalipi, and uh, I've seen Honorable Simon as well. Honorable, I think, yes. yes. Thanks very much, Chairperson. Um, thanks very much for all presenters who have um, presented in this portfolio committee today in regards to M4 municipality. Indeed, the picture there is not a, a promising picture since we met with, um, with this municipality back in 2020. We're hoping for a very progressive report in terms of how is the municipality doing. But I must say, Chair, one is very uh, depressed after receiving reports, because some of the issues that are, are, are raised from AG to national COCTA, provincial COCTA, even the district 
and the local municipality are cutting across, it points to one direction. Uh, Chair, without wasting your time, uh, first of all, I want to get a clarity from the department because last time when the committee had um, an oversight at Mfulini and we know that uh, the municipality is under intervention in terms of section 139, subsection one, subsection B, uh, and section 139, subsection five, and subsection A of the constitution. Uh, so the committee find out that a, a, an administrator who was uh, there in terms of intervention was a, 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 a municipal official. And then the department as well find out after a long time that a person who is an administrator there is a municipal employee and the committee didn't take it very well. So I want to check that progress report if the national COCTA have fixed that because one of the challenges that are also been mentioned here is that uh, there's no stability within the municipality. And if the laws provide that we must intervene in terms of the legislations and the constitution, so the national COCTA must be excelling in terms of ensuring that the intervention is successful. Even section 154 uh, that has been also been implemented there it suggests that there are some slight improvement in terms of finances, but there is no improvement. And we are expecting as this committee to have a, a speedy improvement because at the end of the day, people who are suffering more than us uh, is the poorest of the poor. So that is one uh, for Cocta Chaperson. And the other one for Cocta uh, Chair. Is there, there are someone who are speaking, Chair. So they are also saying to their uh, presentation, Chairperson, that one of the challenges which is mentioned by AG and everyone is the political instability. So I want to know because COCTA, Provincial COCTA um, and COCTA National are the one who is also have to tell us how do they uh, uh, dealt with this situation because we can come here and said that we are implementing some of the strategies and some intervening measures. But if the problem is political, it becomes quite difficult. I'm very happy that when we start the meeting, Chair, you mentioned that the new DM, which is not entirely new in this committee is here because I was hoping that the MEC from Gauteng is going to be here. Uh, as I know that uh, the, the, the officials are here just to ensure that the laws um, are, are used to intervene in some of the challenges. But if the problem is political, yeah, there's nothing that uh, the administrators and officials can do. To Salga, um, I note your intervention in all other programs that you have uh, implemented. So my question to you, Salga, are you happy after we have intervened with those all beautiful programs, uh, including municipal audit support programs. And you also mentioned as well that uh, uh, amongst those municipal audit support programs, it's leadership is finance aspect of it. But are you happy after we have trained councillors trying to assist in terms of ensuring that they are capacitated? Because it's something else when you come and said that you must introduce a fraud policy, debt review war room, and so on and so on. But there's something else if it's not implemented. So that's why one of the presenters, um, I think is a district, at a district level, says that they are not responding. So there's a lack of responsive from the municipality. And the presenter from the district level also mentioned that he understand that there are so many people who are trying to help this municipality. But again, as we we're also mentioning that Chaperson, uh, we can get this presentation from all stakeholders that are trying to assist this municipality. But if the municipality of, uh, 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 itself is not responsive and is not uh, helping in terms of implementing what is suggested to them, so it means we are going to have these problems for a long time. I, Chaperson, the AG have collapsed me when uh, the AG was telling us that, uh, in fact, things are not looking good. 
and in terms of the UIFW. And uh, according to AG, and I think it's Salka as well, who also mentioned that, in fact, on the UIFW, there's an improvement because um, there's a decline from 9 billion to 3 billion, which is, uh, is um, unauthorized expenditure uh, by the municipality. Of which to, to me, this is a very huge amount. And the AG is very specific to say that um, this uh, municipality were not following laws in terms of the MFA. Uh, they were not, um, they were just taking money, irregular and fruitless, wasteful expenditure incurred by the municipality. And after that, Jefferson, there's no appetite to investigate. There's no, there's a lack of consequence management. So my problem, Jefferson, is to say, if we are going to be painted this picture, that even the laws of South Africa is undermined by the municipality, is the SIU there? Because we're supposed to move fast and say people must get arrested. So if we can be also be clarified in terms of law enforcement agency, because I think it's high time that if the municipality does not want to even to investigate this lot of money that has been used irregular uh, in terms of um, them flouting all laws and all uh, a legal instrument that is there provided to them. So it means there is plain corruption and the um, political leadership. They don't want to ensure that this thing comes to an end. And it's a lot of money. It's a lot of money, Jefferson. So I want to check. I don't know if it's the deputy minister, but someone politically must come to our rescue and tell us what, in terms of taking this matter uh, to go and report it to police, is it happening or is not happening? Because the age is very clear to say that there is a problem of compliance in a nutshell. Regulations remains concern and they were repeat of non-compliance findings from this, from pr uh, prior years. And under the material findings, AG is very clear to just give us figures that is incurred by uh, the local municipality. So someone must take responsibility because it can't be that from 2020, it's 2023 now, but we are still on the same, uh, sort of the same, pro uh, same problem that we experienced. So I just want also to get the clarity because when the last presenter from the municipality also mentioned that some of the mechanisms that is provided by the law, I think it's section 154 of the constitution, that you must have boards such as disciplinary boards whereby people have, must go and answer from those boards. But according to the reports that we told we are given here, uh, those uh, reports of the municipal board or DC is still to be finalized. What I didn't get, Chair, is the role of the MPEG. If we do have a structure called MPEG, if it's still uh, active, if it's not, if we can be also be provided with answers to why. The last thing, Chairperson, and uh, we are told that there's a high labor litigation that is taking place, but it's just highlight. And the AG correctly said that even the municipality is failing to pay taxi, which attracts the interest so everything is falling apart in this uh, municipality, Chairperson, and it's very worrisome because it's three years later, since 2020, 2021, 2022, but the picture is still bleak. So therefore, Chair, I want just to zoom in on the issue of the um, law enforcement agencies, if they have uh, here, in order to take uh, up these matters, because I think now, uh, talk, talk, just, just talking, Jay, is not going to help us. But I will be very much appreciating if the, the deputy minister is here to give us some of the answers because once there is a political instability, it means that the political intervention is also needed in order to save people from that municipality. Even, I remember the portfolio committee, unfortunately I didn't go to this uh, oversight, but when they came back uh, to the portfolio committee, they told us that it was difficult because even the community around the Mfulin they were up in arms because they have lost hope in terms of thinking that this municipality will come back to its senses and know that they are expected to ensure that there's a service delivery. 
um, uh, with this situation that is going on. Thanks very much, Chair. Thank you, Honorable Teza. No, thank you very much, Chair. Uh, I was just admitted doctors. Uh, I just came out now, Chair. But uh, just looking for a more quiet place, Chair, so that we can uh, uh, do the work as elected by the people of South Africa. Uh, Chair, the issues that I have with the, with the, with the presentation, Chair, Relate will relate to the fact that first of all, Chair, let me welcome back uh, the DM, uh, uh, Mr. Parkstow, Honorable Parkstow. And the issues that I'm interested in here, Chair, will relate to the state of the supply chain management in that municipality. The second is the is the is the human settlements. And some of the issues that have been raised by the Auditor General. Look, Chair, uh, in terms of the state of local, uh, local government, the mandate uh, is to drive a transformation along sustainable developmental tra trajectory in service delivery terms, Chair. That we are not see seeing here coming true. One, uh, the fact that uh, you have uh, in that municipality a person that is feared uh, in supply chain a supply chain manager is a recurring problem from the time that we visited the municipality. Who took? Who takes a, a, a supastical supastical uh, uh, leave and go on to influence uh, the? the issues in that municipality and the MM and the mayor of the municipality are quite timid of political interference there. And I think, Chair, when we amended, uh, the, the DM will remember, when we amended the, uh, the, the Systems Act, we were, we were trying to curb the problem of political inf influence. When we amended the, the Municipal Systems Act, and we're trying to to, to deal with the issues of staff, low staff morale. We're trying to deal with the, with the migration in local government and professionalization. And then we were trying to deal with the issues of, of stability in the municipality. Now, this does not come to that uh, this municipality having, uh, having uh, these issues recurring from the time that the, the section 139 uh, 1B was, was, it was invoked in that municipality. Questions, the capacity of, 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 of the skills of the, of the personnel within that uh, 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 intervention. But uh, how then are we going to question that particular effectiveness and efficiency if we have such elements in the municipality that are, are, are feared, that are influencing politically? How are we going to realize service delivery of the people? Because it is them that are actually uh, uh, on the suffering end of, 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 of getting the, the, the services that are due to them in terms of the constitution. Number two is the question of human settlements. Chair, I just wanted to, to ask to, 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 to ask the, the department there because they didn't mention the issue of, of, of Sibugeng Hostel and was was Wasiza Hostel, which the department spent over 102 million for the units that were refurbished complete and uh, that that were refresh, uh, refurbished. And now are destroyed by the Nyaopen drug related gas, which is a wasteful expenditure that has not been mentioned in the, in the, in the presentation. To what extent have they uh, uh, put measures in place to ensure that uh, 
people are, are held liable and are arrested for wasteful expenditure in terms of, 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 the, of the amount of, 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 of public funds that have been spent and, 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 and for, for, for issues that have been, uh, that, that, that uh, did not go to for, for intended purposes. And then you have an issue of extension 28 chair there. That started in, 20, in 2016. Slow, which is snail space, which is going at a snail space, uh, snail space there, and it's halted now. It's supposed it was supposed to build three three thousand units. Now we have only one thousand units in terms of the RTP houses. What are the impediments on these matters, and what commitments can the municipality and the department make in terms of assuring the committee that a uh, a uh, these move with speed and 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 who is to be held liable in terms of the companies that were, were elected because i'll tell you what Chair. in some of of the recurring issues there are apollo lights there that are not there the clinics have no electricity they are using generator the province is running out of diesel and the mm who did not listen to 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 the to council one billion of irregular expenditure. Officials did not attend MPEP, a service provider. There's a service provider there that is not mentioned uh, that has spent 4.52 million. And I don't know why is it not mentioned in this presentation and why its name is not, is not mentioned uh, in, that, in, the, in, 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 in terms of uh, uh, what they were supposed to, because that service provider was paid for the services it did not render chair, and so I'm I'm trying I'm asking why is it not uh, mentioned here? Uh, you have uh, human settlements uh, in Subukeng Hostel. There, what happened there is that 132 units in 2016 were built. Uh, promise the, the department promised to come back to build 2,800 RTP. What happened? Because we are not seeing why has Sibugeng Hostel not formed part of the list that was mentioned by the premier in his state of the province address. Can the provincial treasurer uh, explicate as to what happened and, and, and why is it not forming part of, of, that, of, of the list that was mentioned by the premier there? And uh, in terms of section 106, uh, Honorable Kalipi has mentioned that, that, that issue. Uh, Chair, there are indicators that uh, have demonstrated that ineffectiveness and inefficient municipal financial reporting and non-compliance with the, with the SEM laws and regulations. That is why you see the conflict of interest in, and infighting within the supply chain of the municipality. And, and as long, so long as the procure, procuring and tendering process with pervasive consequences such as favoritism, corruption uh, in, the tender, in, the tender, in the tender system persists, uh, it's going, we are going to question it here, that procurement process, Chair, which is encouraged there by the, by the supply chain management uh, and, and chapter 11 of the, of the MFMA. Uh, DM, we're going to we're going to do that. We're going to question a uh, section 112 and and and, and 217 of the constitution, which obliges uh, spheres of government to contract for goods and services in the, in ways uh, that are fair, equitable, transparent, competitive, and cost effective. We are not going to focus on 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 those things of fair, equitable. We are going to focus on the value for money. <laughs> the value that it takes for those tenders to empower communities than, dis, to, do, to, than to disempower communities and empower only individuals, Chair. That's where we are going to be depart and this is what we're going to argue because this is what is reflecting on the ground. The people are not, uh, uh, continue to be disempowered by, by, ten, by tenders, but the individuals themselves do not add value in terms of permanent employment of, 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 of the workers that are within them, meaning that you get it for three months and then you must look for another project and you go and fight there 
for, for, for putting your ID into a raffle and, and chances are you rely on the Holy Spirit that you will be employed again. We can't do that uh, when we when section 10 of the constitution actually uh, implores us that we must actually do uh, what is due in, to, in terms of restoring the inherent dignity of humans in this country. And so we are not going to uh, uh, take that lying down chair. In 2018, 2019 chair, audit findings of supply chain management indicate that municipalities with material compliance findings on supply chain management increased from 72 to 81%. Con the com main contributors there of this, of, of, the, of this regression is failure to develop, implement, and monitor effective systems and processes of internal control and lack of skills, Chair, and competencies in financial reporting. Can the municipality explain or clarify in terms of what constituted the supply chain management conflict of interest and infighting, what remedial action taken by them to discontinue the appointment of less qualified contractors and, and fully utilize the grants there, Chair? Uh, uh, and then uh, in terms of um, the, the, the the district says that it is not adequately funded, Chair. Uh, this thing we have argued here in the committee, Chair, that uh, the categorization of municipality in terms of uh, what the municipal demarcation brought to us here one day is under question again, because most of the municipalities in the country that, are, that have an economy to speak of are the more uh, 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 funded, in terms of the division of revenue, uh, in terms of the equitable share that emanate from the division of revenue formula. And instead of funding the municipalities that are at the call phase of service delivery and that are uh, uh, previously disadvantaged, particularly as it relates to uh, rural municipalities, uh, uh, to what extent is the treasury developed a funding model in terms of the division of revenue with a view to improve the revenue raised nationally in that local government, local government as a, as a sphere of government at, that, at the call phase of, the, of service delivery gets a smaller amount uh, to, of, of less than 10% uh, of the of money that is raised. Can we now, share time? Yes. We are running out of time. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, yes. Uh, just the last one, Chair, uh, on Salka, they are accused of non-involvement of, of uh, in the intervention process. Uh, can Salka clarify this? Why has not has it not uh, developed a financial recovery plan in contravention uh, of Section 142 of the MFMAs, uh, which sets out how a financial a recovery plan must be aimed at uh, securing the municipality's abilities to meet its obligation to, to provide basic service. Because at the center of this is basic service. There are 85,000 homes there in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the Black Township did not have meters. What progress have, have been made in addressing this matter, especially given the fact that the municipality is admitting to the, to the struggling to be struggling with the revenue collection. I think I'll end there, Chair. I'm sorry about over preparation, but this is what uh, we, are, we, we, are, we, are, we are elected to do. Thank you very much. Thank you, Honorable Mbumza. Uh, thanks, Jefferson. Uh, uh, good morning to you and good morning to all uh, colleagues. <clears throat> Chair, allow me to first uh, Congratulate and welcome um, Honorable Deputy Minister Park Stau. You are welcome home. Chairperson, uh, in appreciating the presentations uh, that have been made around the status of uh, governance and service delivery, in particular at Mfule and Municipality, Chair, 
at the time of our oversight visit in that particular municipality on the 14th of October 2020, and the subsequent follow-up uh, meeting, which was necessitated uh, by the fact that uh, at the time of our visit, we found ourselves in a very, very volatile, toxic environment. And uh, our questioning was not responded to by the leadership of the municipality. And uh, when we confronted them in that the chairperson of the portfolio committee at the time was forced to, to adjourn the meeting because there was no response. But at the break time when we're individually confronting the members of the executive, they openly indicated to us that uh, for fear of our lives, we could not answer you there. And we are not going to answer those questions. It's for our own safety. Then it tells you that uh, the, the presentation here made by Cogta um, actually diagnoses the root cause of that state of extreme dysfunctionality and infighting as a political inadequacy and interference and uh, inadequate administrators. Now, Chair, in the report, we are informed that uh, the intervention, both section 154 and 139, didn't bring about any a positive result. And uh, when you look at the trend in all the municipalities that were visited, indicates to that uh, when there is political infighting and interference, the reality is that uh, governance completely collapse because the focus is not on rendering service. The focus is more on fighting and even the institution or its tools are used and deployed towards that particular infighting. Now the question is, having the, both the province having realized this, they had been there through intervention 139 for almost four years from 2020 up now to 2022. At what stage would uh, section 139C be invoked? Because you cannot resolve political problems in an institution. The only section that would address that is to send councillors home. Because if you can't uh, provide this intervention through reading riot act for political leaders, the only option is section 139C. And when then will the province uh, ever decisively invoke section 139 to resolve and to absolve um, the state of dysfunctionality in functionality in these municipalities. That would be my first question, Chair. Secondly, Chair, the Auditor General uh, reflects that uh, in this particular municipality, the key problem, and they use the word critical, that uh, the critical, there is a lack of internal controls. And this, once again, uh, points to the provision of active leadership that had been absent in that municipality, reduced by the infighting as the only leadership out there. Because even when we're engaging the stakeholders, you could see that they were in a fighting mood and the relationship between the municipality and the community was so toxic 
And therefore, when will leaders begin to actively provide the necessary leadership and focus on providing leadership so that internal controls are actually uh, embedded in the institution. At the time of our visit, Chair, we were informed that uh, the municipal ESCOM debt at the particular time was around uh, 1.2 1, billion and uh, water was around uh, the debt to the water board was around uh, almost 600 or something. But now we find that uh, both the electricity bill and uh, the water bill, the water bill had actually ballooned into 5.8 million, the SM debt, as well as 75.2 million. Uh, that is uh, the water debt to the water utility. Can we therefore be explained as to why the debts have escalated in this way uh, while the municipality was uh, actually existing? Again, Chair, when the Portfolio Committee was in that particular municipality, we were informed that uh, projects were identified to deal with water and sanitation challenges. And that service providers had been appointed in this regard. What is the status of the sanitation project at this particular time? Thanks, Chair. Thank you much, uh, Honorable Opperman. Thank you, Chairperson. Chair, it is very disheartening and it paints a very grim and depressing picture to listen to all of these presentations. And we need to honestly ask ourselves, Chairperson, despite intervention, service delivery still remains elusive. I mean, we need to ask ourselves why that is. Is it because of political interference? Is it because of political resistance, political instability? What are the reasons service delivery are still not happening? And that is what the people on the ground desperately need. And we need to ask ourselves, if you look at slides four to six, of the DCO presentation. We need to ask ourselves, can this municipality recover towards being a sustainable municipality? If you look at the historic depth, it seems it is an impossible task. I want to ask a couple of questions. The report of the Human Rights Commission indicates that sanitation and waste is in a worse state now in in Fulani municipality. How will they address the sanitation and switch pellets challenges, especially the environmental impact and the effect of spillages on the Val river system? And 75% of the senior managers in that municipality are not compliant with the minimum competency regulations. So how can you expect capable service delivery delivery in execution of duties. What are the plans in place and the dates in place for these senior managers to be compliant? And I want to know the reason why their projects are not linked to the financial recovery plan. And why has the municipality not been reporting on the financial recovery plan's progress as legislatively required? And when will the FRP be reviewed to be in line with the latest guidelines? Then their MIC expenditure is very low. They fell to spend 87.3 million at the end of December last year. But they say infrastructure is a, a problem and it's so 
bad that the municipality requested National Treasury not to pay over 28 million of MIC funds into their bank account because their bank account have been attached by ESCOM. So how will they ever overcome the infrastructure related problems in that municipality? And allegedly the cost per kilometer of roads, because they heavily invested in roads in the past five years, is very high in comparison to the rest of the country. Can you please explain to me why that phenomena is occurring in the municipality of roads being higher per kilometer than the rest of the country? Then the municipal bank account has been attached in the past by creditors and in December 2022, ESCO attached it again. Can you ever be able to service the debt, the historical debt owed to ESCOM in the water boards. Can we have an open and honest discussion about that, please? And I want to know about, you also budgeted, there's electricity losses and water losses, distribution losses, and it's estimated at 1.3 billion currently. So it's 65% of distribution losses. But my thing is, you are also trading and budgeting for water at a loss. Why is that? And water loss losses reduction was target in the budget funding plan, and it was not achieved. I want to know what are the reasons for that. Chairperson, and my last question, what are the actual costs of labor litigation in the municipality? How many cases are lodged against the municipality currently and to what estimated value? And I thank you. Thank you, Simango. Uh, <coughs> thank you very much, Chairperson. Uh, uh, um, I, I, I want to first um, uh, welcome the presentations that have been made in this platform. Um, I am also uh, tempted to also welcome the Deputy Minister, but in reality, I've just realized that the person that is in this meeting is actually not the Deputy Minister. Um, uh, so I, I, I'm hoping to, uh, that will be corrected because uh, we, 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 are, we, are, we wanted to, we, we almost made that mistake, but be that as it may, um, I will start with the presentation that was done by um, Auditor General uh, Office. Um, there, are, there, are, there are few points that I've noted, and of course, colleagues have managed to touch a number of them, but one of them is this issue of uh, internal controls, uh, which remains um, vulnerable or compromised. And I want to check to the municipality as to, do we now have plans to make sure that finally we do have internal controls um, uh, uh, um, in place in order to make sure that uh, we circumvent um, uh, uh, other problems uh, from happening. And then uh, two, of course, the issue of unauthorized uh, fruitless and wasteful expenditure is also a, an alarming, um, an alarming uh, situation that uh, we need to, we can't run away from. Um, and and, and, and in, in, your, in the report of the municipality, there is nowhere where it talks about uh, who has been held accountable uh, around this? I mean, three billion is 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 is, is too much. Um, so we need to know who has been held accountable, whether internally or even um, the the um, externally. Um, who, who has been uh, held accountable? And then one issue also is this uh, IT steering committee that is also not uh, in place. Again, I want to check with the municipality. Is there a plan to make sure that uh, finally we do have a, the, the IT steering committee in place in order to make sure that uh, the information um, is not uh, penetrated, but also we are able to make sure that you take control of, of the information of, of, the um, of the municipality. Under material uh, irregular, um, uh, irregularities, 
Uh, one thing that I, I noted, which is also a concern, um, is the fact that uh, the municipality did not uh, pay the tax uh, payables. And I want to know what is the reason, or the reason uh, uh, of, 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 of that, of course, to the municipality. But if there is one thing also that we need to note is that the presentation of the AG also makes some notes of uh, significant uh, improvement. And I think that is worth uh, being noted. Moving along to DCOC, um, to DCOC, there is uh, a, a, an explanation that I, 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 I want to request that uh, you, you do for me. You speak about the close up report and uh, kindly explain what is this close up report? What does it entail? Uh, so that we are able to make sure that uh, we follow um, this meeting. And then again to the presentation of the Mfulani municipality, the municipality has uh, you know, made uh, payments agreements, but these payments agreements are not uh, fulfilled. Uh, what is the reason and how are you planning to turn this around? But also, uh, Chair, the, if I remember correctly, the municipality uh, before, they, they, they have been, because, because these problems that are facing the municipality are not, are not new. Now, I, I, I want to check in the, in the presentations, all that were done today, there is nowhere where it's where, where 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 presentation speaks about the interventions that were were were, were given uh, to the municipality. For instance, I remember that uh, defense force at some point uh, it was based in 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 the municipality, uh, offering some level of 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 of, of support. And I don't see that, and, and it's not the only uh, 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 government department or the, 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 the hand that lended the, the, the help that is, 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 is not mentioned. So I'm saying, where do we, we, we locate this uh, uh, um, assistance that has been provided by other government uh, entities or other government departments that uh, might be uh, uh, external? Moving towards uh, the last uh, question, the plan to implement the AG recommendations. Does the municipality have a plan to implement the AG's uh, recommendations in order to make sure that what uh, the, the, the presentation of the AG points out does not uh, uh, occur in the near future? But the last question would be, maybe to the leadership of, 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 of the municipality, be it at the district and at the local uh, level. How do you think uh, you need to be assisted for you to be able to finally move out of this quagmire that you find yourself into, but also make sure that uh, finally you deliver services because these challenges points out to one fact and one fact only, which says you are unable to deliver services because of these problems that we are facing uh, 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 right now. So I'm saying, as the municipality, how do you think you can be assisted in order to make sure that you move out of this, if you will ever move out of this? Thank you very much, Chair. Very much, uh, Honorable Simank. We will now uh, uh, take responses, uh, uh, but we'll come down like uh, we started. We start with the provincial government. If there are any questions specific to yourselves, now we're just responding to questions. Uh, Kokta. Chair, is Kulula Glamas again, if I may start, if you allow, is, would that be fine? Yes, no, it's fine. Thank you so much. There, I'll, I'll just respond to some few points and then there's one question I'll ask uh, the presenter and I'm going okay to respond and perhaps uh, Dr. David Boy from GPT to respond. And those areas, I'm going to ask Mr. Mwepe to speak to the issue of the administrator versus a uh, municipal official in terms of the uh, previous intervention, you'll speak to that. And if Mr. 
where boy DTG treasurer can speak to the issue of the RFP that has been raised. But let me just speak to one or two points uh, very quickly. One, the issue of the close-up report that has been raised. Um, the close-up report is uh, the report uh, after the intervention that reflects what was intervention all about, what has happened, what are some of the uh, achievements or failures of that intervention. So that's the report that has been referred to, uh, Chair. And the, we do, of course, have the report, um, which has been distributed to some few stakeholders, but the problem with it is that in order for it to have a final full status, it needs to be approved by the provincial cabinet EXCO. And that process has not been finalized, uh, the approval at EXCO. So uh, that is a report that is being referred to. So it will become official once EXCO has approved the report. But we, in the interest of the different conversation, we made it available even to TCOV National, although it doesn't have a status until it's approved by EXCO. So that is the report that has been referred to as a closer report. I think there's uh, one of the members uh, raised uh, the issue. So that's one point. There was an issue, it was referred to the municipality as a question, but I thought I should say one or two things, the installation of meters. Um, but the municipality will still uh, respond to some of the specific issues. We, uh, we have been in the last year up to now, uh, also as part of, I think it was mentioned by the MM, supporting the municipality in installation of meters. But our focus has been on what we called um, large power users. Uh, because we felt that uh, given the limited resources that we had, that's an area at least where they can uh, uh, recover a little bit more from the kind of uh, big businesses that are using electricity. So there's a project, uh, is, I think it's, on, it's in its second year now that focuses on that. But the municipality can respond to some of the issues, I think, around the household meters. So I thought I should make those those two points, Chair. The other area, although it's not exactly ours, but it's a provincial issue, the issue around human settlement and hostels. Um, I'm not sure if there's a, the department is in the in the virtual room, Chair. So um, perhaps there's something we'll refer to them and find a man in which they can come get that to, to the committee. I would not want to second guess and answer on their behalf. Um, so let me leave it at that. I think then I'll invite Ntatengwebe to answer the question around the administrator and that David Boy on the issue of the RFP. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Um, the others who were asked to respond. Afternoon, Chair. This is uh, Patrick Weber from COPTA. Um, Chair, the, the, the issue around the administrator or oh, the, uh, the the section 13915b being invoked and uh, an administrator not being um, appointed at the time i think that was back in between 2018 and 2020 um, and uh, that was purely a function of the interpretation of um, section 1391b which did not necessarily dissolve the uh, the council um, and and in the missing, in, in in that interpretation, ultimately um, a, an individual was appointed, not not as an administrator, but I think at a later stage when um, that that in, interpretation was corrected, uh, the intervention was then refocused in 2020, um, up until it was terminated in uh, 2022 to ensure that there was an officially appointed administrator who was supported by a number of um, lead or team, what we could call team administrators for the specific areas of intervention. So that, that are, that's how the, the, the matter was um, uh, uh, corrected, uh, Chair, thanks. Yeah, yes, let's continue, if. Very good. Good afternoon and good afternoon to the members. Owen Witboy from Gauteng Treasury. Uh, Chair, just on the matter of the financial recovery plan, it just so coincidentally happened this morning uh, that uh, part of our team in Gauteng Treasury had met with the National Treasury uh, MFRS team, and that is a team in terms of the MFMA who are legally allowed you know, to compile financial recovery plans. So um, there is a discussion on the way on review of the financial recovery plan 
for M. Fuleni Municipality and, and mindful chair that uh, this, this plan has been instituted um, in 2019 uh, officially. Uh, and also, Chair, we are having a discussion not only limited to M. Fuleni, but, but also on the Western side, um, equally to review that particular financial recovery plan. So, Chair, that is just a commentary um, as it relates to the financial recovery plan. But I just want to re-emphasize, you know, the work that we do in supporting M. Fuleni and other municipalities, we obviously do jointly, you know, with Copta and with Salga within the province. Uh, Chair, let me leave it at that. They, um, as indicated by, by Kulu, Kulu, if you need me to respond to other matters, you'll guide me. But thank you very much, uh, Chair. Thank you. Uh, we, then we move down to uh, AG. Um, uh, thank you, Chair. Um, I think uh, generally, as I've listened to the questions, it was more noting the concerns that we've raised. Uh, most of the questions have been directed to, to the municipality as well as the department to come in in response to our report. So I will allow for that to, to take place. Thank you. Okay, uh, Salga. Um, thank you very much, Chairperson. Um, I think uh, uh, from Salga's side, Chair, the question was, uh, are we happy with the support that we provide to the municipalities? Uh, Chair, what we can say at the moment that we are seeing um, positive results in terms of the support that we've provided to the municipality, as reported by the MM, the, the, you can see the functionality uh, of the MPEC, the oversight committees, they are working very well and the appointment of the risk officer and apologize for the mistake that I made earlier on. But we are seeing positive, but this is an on, ongoing support chair. Like we indicated that we have adopted this municipality to monitor um, the support that we provide, that it, it yields impactful uh, success in terms of the pro support that we provide to the municipality. Thank you very much, chair. Thank you. Let's then move to uh, Dickock. Thank you very much, Chairperson. Live from DCOC. I picked up four questions, um, but two have uh, since been responded to sufficiently by the provincial colleagues. But before I, I answer the questions, just to clarify, Chairperson, and I thought uh, Chairperson would have seen the chat earlier uh, in terms of the confusion whether DM Dow is here. Uh, Deputy Minister Dow is not part of the session. Um, it says peel it down from Sarah would have clarified that I think that's the name that we saw earlier on. Um, so DMDAO is not part of this session, uh, Chairperson. The, the, the first question is political in nature and, 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 and I'll respond it from the technical point of view. I'm sure my principals would have uh, responded adequately to it uh, in terms of the political intervention. To the extent that we would have diagnosed some of these uh, inadequacies that uh, honorable members are referring to, as relating, for example, um, to the non-functionality of the governance structures, the council level, uh, capacity, and all of that. I'm sure between ourselves, national, the province, and Salga would have done some work in terms of, being, uh, of ensuring that we would capacitate uh, at the political level some of those issues around capacity and so on and so forth. But if you also look at the, at the observations that this very same committee made in 2020, realize some of, the, of these um, political issues were just around just taking in action in some of these instances in terms of consequence management and so on, which is why we make the point that moving forward, we would need to do a proper diagnosis so that we understand the nature of the politics um, at play so that we respond to it as it manifests itself in terms of this, all these facets. So if it's to do with non-functionality of council structures, we would have to put in place programs to deal with that. If it's capacity at that level, we'd have to do, um, deal with that. But generally, the, at the political level, there would have been some engagements uh, since the start of the intervention to ensure that some of these issues um, are dealt with. The, the second and the last point, um, uh, I remember Opperman, just around the, the MIG, the high cost per kilometer in Mfulen. It is a fact when we look at the MIG um, uh, project, especially on roads, Nationally, they have the highest one. 
And we're hoping that the national treasury work that is being done around the standardization of pricing and so on will then deal with some of those issues. But there are two issues that I wanted to raise there. The one is that towards the start and um, just at the start of the intervention itself, prioritization in terms of MIG projects in Influen has always been around roads. And if you look at the numbers, which I don't have now, you'd see how much over the five-year period of MIG grant had been spent um, on road whilst we had sanitation projects uh, or problems and challenges. The second point we're making is around the substandard nature of the work that has been done around the very same roads that um, um, cost so much. And I think then, if you want to go to the root cause, it would be to speak to issues about contract management and all of that. And these are the issues that we're raising such that moving forward, we're able to address some of those uh, uh, situations. Uh, thanks, Chairperson. Apologies, everybody. Chairperson uh, to board for his flight. Um, and you asked that Mr. Kumza take over for the last part of the meeting. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks, Sharin, and uh, thank you, honorable members. Uh, can we now allow? Oh, move on, Amland. I don't want to look share away. Move on, Amland, group in. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, honorable members. We have fun. I'm calling the signature. We have fun. Thank you, honorable members, for electing me. Thank you very much. Well, now protect me when I. The honorable members. Oh, Honorable members, can we now allow the, the district to respond? <laughs> can we allow now the mayor of the district to respond to questions raised related to the district? I think uh, um, the issue of the financial viability of the district, uh, that's that's the main issue that we cannot even give uh, financial support to Enfulene, particularly on issues of service delivery. The issue around the CUA uh, is still a big challenge. One would expect that with the intervention of Section 63, we have seen, we have built um, something of, of, uh, in, in, in that regard, Chair. So it's, it's, an, it's a, a standing item with Kokta Gauden to see what are the future of the district in Gauden because purely we just coordinate our municipalities and uh, through the IGR structures and play over oversight on this uh, section 663 and section 139. But in the main, the issues of service delivery still remain in Enfuleni. One issue that I can comment on how would want this municipality to assist it um, the one on the section 63, I think um, that's my view, how we've implemented section 139, we're doing the same mistake that we're doing on section 163, because you can't separate what is it that uh, municipalities still need to do, what is it that uh, Renotas and implementing agency on behalf of department can do. Currently, what the municipalities in the main is focusing on, or what uh, Rainwater is still focusing on. It's the sewer that goes into people's houses. Not even at 70%, uh, we are now at the real issues of uh, rehabilitating the underground infrastructure. So Chair, we're still uh, having those challenges at the sewer, where it's, I think that uh, from this committee and what the DWS is doing and uh, Rainwater in Mfuleni, we that's where seriously we need something that our communities can really see that uh, there is service delivery that has been given to our communities. Thanks, Chair. Uh, thanks. Uh, uh, uh. Thanks, the district. And uh, can we now allow the um, full in the municipality? The platform is yours. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's April again. Um, start with, uh, with, with, uh, with the impact. There was a question where I wanted to know whether the impact is, is there, is it functional? Yes, the impact is there. It's got a full time chairperson. Um, yeah, it's sitting uh, twice a quarter. Even last week, it was a sitting. There's also another sitting that is scheduled for next week at dealing with the uh, UIWF. And the chair, with regards to the 
municipality, I mean, are failing to pay tax. Uh, Chair, at some point where you are encountering this attachment uh, from rainwater, you know, from ESCOM, um, it becomes very difficult. I mean, uh, yes, you may find that when you have to pay for, the, for, uh, for those state parties, uh, you, you jump, but uh, once the account is, is uplifted, I mean, you recover. Let me just give you an example. Like now, when the account was attached, I mean, uh, during, during December, where we have uh, engaged with ESCOM, I mean, uh, to negotiate, and the um, attachment was on the, the bank account was only uplifted, you know, for the salary uh, payment, of which it is also a cause of delay uh, to the payment uh, of debt parties. And then that creates a huge problem. I mean, uh, for the municipality, the, the municipality it becomes exposed, I mean, uh, uh, on that. And Chair, there was a, a question of the what do we do or what progress has been made in addressing of the 90. Uh, and unmetered, so we've allocated uh, a budget uh, to, for the starter uh, to install uh, 10,000 meters, so I mean, to recover, because in the main, when when we're listening to the presentation, is the financial viability, and also uh, where we, we, we are failing on the revenue uh, collection to reach our targeted uh, uh, budget. With that, there are also uh, programs uh, that are put in place, because it's not only the water meters. You may find that you install the water meters, but uh, what do you do uh, if there's a leakage uh, in the network? So uh, we also included the pipe, uh, the pipe replacement, because also to cap uh, the distribution losses. Because if you look at the distribution, losses, especially on water, they are uh, you know they are very high, and also other program uh, for the pressure, pressure reducing valve because in the most of the project reducing valve uh, are not functional anymore. When rainwater push um, water into the system and it find that the PRVs are not working, uh, then there's a high losses because I mean, we know the water are flowing at high pressure and then uh, you, you they, they cannot maintain that pressure. So you lose yeah, a lot of money there. So, so yeah, those are the programs that are, they are aimed to address the distribution and at the same time, want to recover on them. Uh, <laughs> Uh, on the losses, and um, the the other thing is the on the on the on the large power users uh, where I indicated that uh, uh, there's a lot of money that doesn't come to the municipality because of uh, uh, yeah of court orders where large power users uh, they did approach the court and then they received they received that court order to say they can pay escom directly, but the agreement was that the, those large power users will be built. Uh, uh, by the by the municipality, but because of those old agreement, where they are using the old tariffs, uh, the large power users uh, when they receive the bills and then they effect that tariffs and then they pay escom. But that amount it doesn't become the amount that is built by the municipality. That results, I mean, uh, into a problem because uh, it it become lesser and then as a result, the municipality is unable to uh, to pay uh, the, you know the current uh, account. And also in addition to that, it was a, that uh, why the debt has escalated, I mean, yeah, in this, uh, 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 I mean, ESCOM and rainwater. So if you look at the interest that is charged by um, uh, by ESCOM, uh, prime prime plus 2.5%, I mean, I mean it was sitting, at, if I'm not mistaken, at 10.75 uh, 10 plus 2.5%. It's come, I mean, it's charging um, interest rate uh, like uh, 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 is making like a bank. I mean, you know, commercial bank whereby uh, it will use the municipality, uh, you know, to generate, I mean, a fund. I mean, it becomes very difficult, as I indicated in my presentation, that only during the month of, uh, of January, we have to pay the interest of, of 50 million. Uh, currently, I've got the interest of 45 million because how the interest is calculated is calculated here on the yeah, on the debt of the amount that is owed to them. That makes it very, very, yeah, very difficult uh, to, to, I mean, uh, to recover because it will take too long. Otherwise, if there's no intervention, the, the mandates owed to ESCOM, I mean, it will be, uh, you know, the perpetual debt. And then um, and there was a question on, and on the issues uh, that are raised uh, by Audra General, what the plan uh, are we putting in place? Uh, we've, we've uh, Put an operational clean audit, you know, to address all the findings, uh, all the 96 findings that uh, 
that are raised by the uh, by the auditor general and um, there was also another question how do you think you need to be assisted I mean, to deliver service okay is is on the debt collection but in the main the court the, uh, we know this uh, this dispute that you are getting from the uh, from the uh, from the consumers i mean uh, big companies where they are they are coming with dispute and they they go to court and the court I mean, uh, orders. Maybe we need uh, attorneys or companies, whether it's national or provincial, to get assistance. I mean, in fighting, uh, you know, with those disputes, because you find that uh, slash power users. I mean, there's an expense, for example, I mean, of 18 million. I mean, uh, consumption. I mean, in 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 rent value. If the municipality is unable to recover that amount because of the court order, it it becomes very difficult because there's a consumption, and then you pay, and as as I mean, interest. We, we are we are not charging. I mean, our 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 consumers. You know, uh, the same. Yeah, the same interest. I mean, especially. Uh, I mean, if it's. I mean, if it's the community. So, um, the other question, which um, within in the, the you know the list and how much is estimated for pay on the location. I think that check we can be prepared. I mean, and submitted because also the. I mean, we are losing a lot of money. I mean, on the on the on litigation and the, and the amount that is paid uh, uh, to the to the you know the attorney's uh, 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 chair and then uh, the ICT steering committee chair that uh, uh, there's no progress yet uh, is something that municipality uh, that we're looking to so that I mean it, it can be it, it can be kept but what we have done through our chief risk officer this risk assessment we know that is was done I mean in, in that. Uh, uh, the department to look what are the risks and then what are the mitigation measures uh, uh, that need to be put uh, uh, in place. Yes, Chair, it's true uh, on some of the assistance we've made with Salga uh, over the past weekend, I mean, to, to look and deal with the, some of the strategic issues to, to say how we, we overcome, you know, the situation uh, that we find ourselves and what programs we need to roll out, I mean, to show, you know, that we, you know, that we cover. Uh, 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 um, yeah, on the revenue, uh, the project that will assist us to say, look, uh, we are we because we are all seven uh, seven point two, we are all in seven point two in actual fact, and you see that we need fourteen billion, and also you mentioned that our 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 budget, I mean, it it is unfunded. So through strategic lecuta that we had, like you know, last week we came up with a uh, you know with the programs that look that we believe they will assist us. I mean, on yeah on recovery, uh, chair. Um, the other intervention that we have on the yeah on the MIG to yeah, to ensure that the money is spent correctly is a cost of reinvestment uh, committee uh, that every time when the project is done, uh, COCTA uh, and uh, they come to the ground. I mean uh, to do the inspection to ensure, to check or to ensure that uh, whatever uh, is paid or is, yeah is claimed. I mean is paid uh, correctly uh, so that you know there's no wastage. I mean of money. But also another question to say, we have instructed I mean, the National Treasury not to deposit the 28 million I mean, to the municipal bank account. At that time, it was it was January. You were, uh, in December, when the when our our our, our account it was attached, it becomes very difficult because you cannot transact. I mean, you know the uh, you know the account yeah, it was withheld. So it was advisable to say, look. Uh, to COCTA uh, or to National Treasury, don't transfer the money because so we cannot do any any I mean any transaction, and we're still negotiating. I mean with ESCOM to say release I mean the account, and that it is a bearing. Yeah, in fact, it's affected you know the performance of the municipality. I mean in December, uh, the expenditure was low, and it also in January where the service providers uh, you know they indicated to us look, we cannot continue with, with the performance of the ground because we are not sure whether we're going to get paid. Or we're not going to get paid. If it's other service providers who are not working with municipality, actually they could have uh, terminated to you know the project. I mean, you know the, the municipality. I mean, could have been you know exposed. But uh, with uh, with engagement with them, you know, writing to them to say, look, this is a situation. We weren't able to pay. You. Can you be patient with us? I mean, you know, this is what we did. And then after we received the money, we, we, then we were able to effect uh, 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 those payment. Otherwise, I mean, if it was not that. Uh, all the money, I mean, it, it could have been written with, uh, you know, with ESCOM. The other thing that maybe we need to assist at, uh, as a question is it came through IGR structures. So we know the way we are dealing with ESCOM. I think through through IGR structures, we know some of the issues, you know, the, 
they can be resolved there because now and then we are going to court. I mean, with ESCOM just only this week. Uh, I mean, we're at court again, you know, uh, with ESCOM, uh, large powers or some of the companies, you know, they are, they are approaching court. They said, no, we cannot supply them. I mean, we are with electricity. So perhaps, I mean, nationally or provincially, if we can, that can be active, I'm sure we, we can come to sort of an, yeah, an agreement to how, how we resolve, uh, uh, you know, these issues. Chair, I think those are the, those are my response, unless uh, uh, there are some there are some some others that I omitted. My colleagues are here. They think CFO, if they can add, if there's anything to add. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, CFO. Anything to add? Thank you, Chair. Uh, mine will just good uh, afternoon, um, members of the committee. Mine, Chair, is mainly on the UIFW so that at least there's also an understanding of where the biggest problem is, Chair. And our biggest problem is on unauthorized expenditure. And this unauthorized expenditure, it's mainly on two issues. One is the amount outstanding on um, rainwater and ESCOM, which unfortunately the interest that is being charged there as the MMS indicated, currently sitting at 50 million. Unfortunately, we are unable to budget for that because we don't have uh, enough money, a realistic budget to cover that expenditure. So that is one of the biggest issues that is resulting in an unauthorized expenditure. And the loss is chairperson that the MM indicated of 1.3 billion. It means we are buying and losing such significant amount of money without recovering. So the importance of metering and fixing our infrastructure will only assist us to reduce this expenditure. So the irregular expenditure, we have seen a, a movement chair in terms of trying to reduce that. We have got legacy contracts that unfortunately, until um, we finalize those, we will still be having such. But we are making sure that we avoid to do deviations and procure outside the normal tendering process. Yes, there are areas of concern in SCM. We are strengthening the control environment but indeed we take note of the comments that have been raised and we will be making sure that we minimize and avoid at all costs uh, interference as we are currently really busy doing in making sure that we follow due process in all the appointments. Indeed, the issue of localization, we are trying hard, even with the new SCM policy uh, after the Constitutional Court judgment. When we reviewed the policy, we have looked at those issues to ensure that where we can, we emphasize on using local companies. Chair, thank you uh, on that note. Thanks. Uh, thank you, CFO. Uh, with your response and contribution uh, in response to question raised. Uh, Honourable members and the colleagues, these questions that are raised by members of parliament or to the municipalities and the departments are intended uh, to draw our attention and action to focus on these matters that have to be attended to in the governance and the running of uh, the M-Fuller municipality in the district. 
<clears throat> and the district were in motion to support uh, the local municipality to perform uh, its uh, functions. <clears throat> uh, Mayor of the Mfulini, it would be very important that uh, we actually calibrate uh, officials that were appointed uh, in the administration from politics. Uh, so that uh, because once officials, they become involved in politics and we employ them in the administration, we will find ourselves in a situation that Mufulemi finds itself. Thank you very much for your contribution with the response of the CFO, we are now commitment. And uh, thank you very much for your contribution, all of you. Uh, the meeting stands adjourned. Long live the chair. Long live the chair. Mm, we are cool, but long chair. live. Long live. <laughs> thank you.